minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, lift off. Shake it, bake! Does that feel good? Yeah! Shaking and baking, baby! Welcome to episode 34. Wow. <laughs> what are you doing? Is that the thing? I can uh, do that. I mean, it can be. The, um, beauty of, the beauty of Stevie being the oldest one on here, Lyle, you and I can do whatever we want and he'll follow the lead. That's true. Yeah, that's not how being old and experienced works. Um, it has to do with not being, not following direction, taking charge. Matt, I appreciate you having the parental advisory up already. We're going to need it tonight. Uh, folks, put your kids to bed. This is going to be a barn burner. Welcome to episode 34 of the Shake and Bake Show with Steve Fast Jackson. Canadian bacon enders. And Lyle, be luck in the world. Bill Aluminum CNC Machine Master Barnett. I'm still myself. Bacon. Sizzle. Uh, are you, though? <laughs> Oh, oh my gosh, I broke a nail in Erica's race car this weekend, Lyle. Oh, this man. one was just for you. Fresh oh. off the game of pickleball. You got your skirt on? <laughs> Ooh, it's going to be bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a bad deal. Like, this is the one. Do not let the kids watch your show. Please don't let the kids watch this one. Just put them to bed. Uh, we haven't seen you guys in two weeks. A lot has happened in the drag racing world. We have a mountain of topics to cover. I have missed the hell out of you guys, missed the heck out of the fans. What have you guys been up to the last 14 days? I feel like I say the same thing every week. Uh, well, since then, I had a decent outing at Phoenix. Didn't win. Went around. Eh, could have done better. Could have been way worse. Could have not qualified. Um, then I went to uh, back to the beadlock shop. So I've just been beadlocking the world. That's it. Continuing the quest. For bead locking every back wheel that spins around in circles, we want all of you know. You know, it's that. I still get calls. People say, you know, I just had no idea, no idea you guys did this, and I'm like, we literally say it all the time. Hey, I have customers all the time that call and say, do y'all sell Hemi engine parts? And I'm like, yeah, we do. We got like, them all. Stuff. It's like, like all you sell tank rods, pistons, heads, motors, blocks, engines. Power. Oh, no, my favorite. My favorite one. So I apparently have reached a new demographic. Uh, excuse me. Of uh, in, uh, of customer. And they call me and they say, hey, I uh, want to send you guys a couple wheels. But uh, how do I get them to you? And I'm like, carrier pigeon? <laughs> no. uh, elephant? The owl from Harry Potter? Jesus Christ. Put them in a fucking box. We'll tape package Lyle, them. You've been introduced to the general public. They're no, not man, smart. Like, you know, I mean, I get some people don't know where to buy. Like, would you know where to buy a box big enough to put a wheel in? Probably Me? not. You lie. I mean, um, yeah, I just well, save all the wheel boxes when we buy wheels and right. Them. But if you haven't done that, then you would. The, however many of you are watching right now, if you go to Lowe's, Home Depot, or Walmart, they have a medium. Or size. even like U-Haul stores. Medium size heavy duty moving box is 17 by 17 by 17. Really? There's Perfect. your shake and bake tap tip. Perfect. Also, Perfect. let's use the Google machine. Can you put an 18 inch wide B lock in it or no? You can. You just got to use where the, where the flaps, you just got to kind of fold them over, Fine put another shit. small piece of cord bar, cardboard on the top, fold her over. Nice little tape job. Right now, everyone is on the way to Home Depot because shipping wheels is a pain in the ass. So we How? save the boxes. We save cylinder head boxes, engine block boxes, crank boxes. Like we have a stack of them because you well, there's a pain. Most, most wheels are 22 pounds a piece with the box and everything. 25 is safe. Should cost you no more than $100 no matter where you are in the United States. Get them to me. I need a note with your name and telephone number in the box, please. So I can call you when the wheel arrives at MacFab Beadlocks. See, you don't ever get wheels that just don't have any note or business card. Best one, get I got a set of wheels mm, within the past, this year for sure. Like this calendar year, shipping label on the wheel. That's it. Hell yeah. Oh, um, I want to guess Anthony, uh, I need to give a shout out to CFH always. Thank you, CFH. I don't know what we're shouting them out for, but thanks, CFH. 
Uh, we, I'm taking notes in the comments because we're going to talk about so much stuff. I'm not going to be able to keep up with it. So I brought a sticky notepad that's retractable. You like that? So if you guys ask a question, I'm going to attempt to get back. If I don't, uh, Jason, cool people wear visors, old and cool people. Uh, you, and, you and Jay Cox. Jay Cox copied me. Jay Cox because, is cool though. Besides no disrespect to Lloyd, but I'm Jay Cox's daddy. All right. What have you been up to? You've been uh, zipping back and forth. <laughs> what? Yeah, I, I just love it. Lloyd's Lloyd's a shit talker. I love it. You're playing pickleball. Yes. Yeah, so um, I normal. wish I wish I had time to do uh, normal shit. Moose I went. Huh? Syrup on your pancakes. Okay. Anyway, y'all shut up. My turn. Yeah. I went to PDRA since we've seen you. I went to PDRA. I missed y'all in Phoenix. We were like ships crossing in the night. I uh, went to PDRA. It was freaking awesome. We had winter circle before nine o'clock. And if y'all have ever been to a PDRA race, can I get a fucking hallelujah? It was amazing. Hey, I can I get a hey, oh, yeah. o'clock in the morning? I know. I don't book my flights until like three, four o'clock in the afternoon the next day because I'm usually dead to the world. And I mean, it was it was awesome. So uh, great show. Some new blood one. We'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, then this past weekend, I was in Vegas for the Quattro Wide Nationals. Um, which uh, we'll get to in a minute as well. So I don't do anything but go to drag races these days. Uh, my dog Jackson, he's still chilling here. He's been sick the last two weeks. We've had some rough nights. Things have been bad, but we're coming. We're on the mend. On is, the he mend. Sport? is he an emotional sport animal? Jackson's a special boy. He's got some issues, and he's turning. Does he? Is he go north of the border too, or he doesn't fly? We he ain't quite get everybody in the airplane. We ain't quite figured that out yet. We may have to um, drive or put him on a. PJ, we ain't quite figured that out. Uh, yes, uh, give a thumbs up, people. If you're not subscribed to Stevie Patrick's YouTube channel, subscribe, hit that like button and that bell icon. You can be notified also when we have an episode of the Shake and Bake Show. Very much shameless plug. All right, so you just been hanging around, going to some races, not going to Phoenix, and messing around. Yep, Boom. and then I go. I just unpacked my suitcase today, threw some uh, laundry in, and I'll go to PDRA here Thursday morning. Yeah, we're going to talk about Peter A. Virginia, yep. too. Dude, it's uh, hot right now. Man, it's the racing. I feel yeah. like racing as a sport is hot right now. Like, there's... We're in the thick of it. Th like, it's stacked up. Nothing we're just coming know. off of eight weeks in a row. Yeah. Um, and everybody is everybody is uh, racing left and right. I'm not writing that comment down. Um, Which one? Good. Good. Everybody's... Oh, whoopsie. Racing. Everybody's left and right. Uh, does Jackson like peanut butter? Yeah. I'm not sure. I feel like that was going a direction I didn't want, though. But, yeah, he does. Yeah. I think so too. yeah. We'll leave that be. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> there we go. Pit report. Yes. Uh, all right. So, let's talk about – let's back up to NHRA Phoenix. So, we haven't recapped Phoenix, right? Oh, no. shit. No, we haven't. Well, let's recap Phoenix. We've got a really special guest coming on in a little bit, and I want to get, I want to stay away from any small tire topic or words that start with R and end with L until Donald comes on. Let's play a game. What other cool words start with R and L? Leave them in the comments. Uh, there's a freight company called R and L. <laughs> Josh Hart. <laughs> That's all I got. Uh, um, are you? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so. Phoenix. All right, let's talk about top fuel and start on the way back. Uh, who's oh. top fuel in Phoenix? You got your shit or no? Um, did you name your dog after me? Yes, Stevie, I did. Thanks. Actually, I named him after um, I was married when I got him to Adam Lambert, and I named him Jack Lambert after the great Pittsburgh Steeler, Jack Lambert. Okay. I was scared. But he's Jackson Enders now, so there's that. Uh, I used to, yes, I do remember going to SRD. We used to drive to SRD every Wednesday night after work. I would leave work at, uh, either Master Pontiac or Lincoln Mercury, wherever I was working then. And we would drive all night, run at SRD on Wednesday night, come back, go to work on Thursday, and then go to Jackson on Saturday and crush everybody. Those Where did they write down our prediction? <laughs> oh, gee. Oh, I, got, I know I got one or two of them. I, I know. Got, I know I got two right. You did get two, right? I did. I got, uh, yeah, I believe that's in my other bag. We ain't going to have that tonight. Um, I picked Sean Langdon and Austin Proc. I do remember that. I picked Austin Proc. Because I remember I called Sean Langdon out to come on the Shake and Bake show because he won't. 
So there's that. Um, I did not pick Greg Anderson, and Greg Anderson won. Um, and I did not pick Dallas Glenn for the Winter Nats, and he won. Um, I was surprised. We tested in Tucson. I was surprised to see um, some of the KB cars, including Dallas, testing in Tucson with us. Um, what well, worked out? Well, I do have some pro stock drama later. Oh, yeah, some... I wanted to talk. Yeah, about we are going to get to the pro stock drama because me and well, there's some rule changes going on. I mean, yeah, even we... though even though Austin won the pro shootout, that was his first official. It NHRA was twenty car win. It was, and it was friggin' awesome. And he, I got to watch that race from my couch, which was amazing because I just hear we just have the radios on in the trailer and listen to who won. I got to watch it. Parental advisory up. Yeah. That motherfucker drove. He was everywhere. He pedaled one run. He pedaled like eight times and butterflies were flapping that son of a gun. And when they interviewed his dad, he was basically like, yeah, this was Austin's race. Like he was a driving son of a gun. Like he, like we all know that he is. It was awesome to watch. And Alexis being in the finals, super cool momentum changer for her. She really needed that. Really needed that. Do you think that Austin is hungrier now because it's a family deal than what he has been? Because he's driving aggressively like he is. I think yes for that, but I also think because it's new and he has nothing to lose and everything to prove, and he's just such a raw driver. Like we we talked about it when we had him on here, but we've talked about it behind his back too. He's a freaking driver. Like he, he shuts his brain off and just acts. And that comes from the history that we learned when he was on the show of all the things he's driven. But I think he is just so driven to be great that he just, he has no fucking thought and he just acts. <laughs> I, I think he's, I think he's super confident as well. Like when he stepped into that thing, it was obvious that he could one could contend for a championship and it was going to be fast enough to win. And, I mean, I, I'm one. I think I'm proof of that. If you're confident in the shit that's under your ass, yeah, flat, get it done in that some bit. And he is. It's his dad. It's his brother. You know, you're right. So maybe that does have to do with it. I'm gonna find our fuck picks. Mike, that's Lyle Barnett. He's the model that's on the panel. Lyle. His name is Lyle. Yeah. That's what? Me. What? Yes, clearly. I mean, um, you want to show you my good side? Oh, everybody wants to, uh, so this is my, uh, everybody's dogging me out about my video, my haircut today. This is my summertime about to teabag your ass haircut. Oh my so God. if you guys watch me race for a long time, there's two Stevie Fast haircuts. We've got a one and a half on the back and a finger length on top with a fade when it's cold. And then we got a one and a half on the back. And, I mean, a one on the back and a two on top when it's hot. So this is summertime. Got my helmet on and it's hot as hell in there. The other one's your PRI haircut. Then you got PRI haircut when I got to go get some cheese and I'll have a little longer, put a little part in it and look like I got some money, wear a nice watch and try to sell some motors. So yeah, there's yes. actually three, but the PRI haircut only comes out uh, when I got to try to sell some parts. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know you have to sell some parts. You need Courtney, to Courtney, which haircut are you rocking right now? Yeah. What you got? Uh, um, I actually have a hair appointment tomorrow, so we'll see. All right. Make, so right, right cut some off. off. Write us down your list. We got to touch on some pro stock bike drum. I don't know what that is, but I'll definitely you probably do, and somebody doesn't, so we're gonna get to that in a little bit. Uh, <laughs> who cares what your hair looks like, man? Well, I want to look nice for my winter circle photo. So, like when you oh. get out, pull the helmet off. So, us talking, <laughs> speaking on Pro Mod in Phoenix. Yep. Oh, Kevin River Snake. River Snake and the tractor pull team. I had to listen to it for all last week. I don't know if y'all saw the that I was on the full pull podcast tractor pulling deal. They wanted out that a tractor puller come out here and kick the shit out of all of us. He was at uh he was at oh I found the list. I knew I would. He was at Galat on Thursday and I didn't really realize he was leaving or think nothing about it. And then I saw him on any tree TV and I'm like, oh okay, cool. Bye. <laughs> but none of us picked him to win, so found the list. <laughs> There was uh, some surprising performances in Phoenix that shocked a lot of us in performance-wise. Uh, for me, it's good to see Stan Shelton get a win. They're uh, long-term ambassadors of our class, work hard, spend a lot of money, put in a lot of behind-the-scenes work, and uh, it was good to see them see Culp Lumber get a win. 
But there was some surprising performance numbers in in Phoenix Pro Mod. Yeah, can we talk about rule changes and uh, and surprising performance numbers? Sure. Uh, so NHRA Technical, I wish I had a screenshot of this. NHRA Technical Department released a new rule this week that states that you are no longer or cannot have a friction disc material in your torque converter, nor can you have a weld up torque converter. It has to be bolted together and available for inspection. So this is unusual for this to come out immediately after a race. Um, and there's all kinds of rumors swirling about the ProMod class and some of the performance numbers we saw in Phoenix. And the new rule change just swirls the rumors and fans the fire. Uh, it's kind of exciting. Uh, kind of do you want to, because I seriously doubt there are many in here that truly know, do you want to touch on the friction disc? Yeah, so basically, unless you have a nitrous car, you are not allowed to run a lockup torque converter in NHRA. And that stems from back in the day, everybody had a clutch. Then you couldn't run a lockup clutch. Then everybody come out with torque converters. Uh, so th it's in the rule package that unless you have a nitrous combination, you have to run one-to-one -one high gear, and you do a nitrous combination too, one-to-one -one high gear. And you can't have anything mechanically locking the torque converter. The rules surrounding the entire transmission fluid circuit dump trans brake release of all the crap that they put in these transmissions in the torque converter are very gray. Basically what it states is that you cannot manipulate the pressure or volume of the torque converter after the car leaves the starting line. Any manipulation has to be deactivated with the trans brake button. They further come in last year to clarify that rule package and actually state how it had to be wired. Uh, going in last year, most of everybody had it hooked into a smart wire where you could leave the dump on and turn it off with another parameter, like once the engine got enough boost or once something had happened, or they had it hooked in on the output of the ECU where you can turn it off with anything. So NHRA came out mid-season and stated that it has to be let go with the button. They further uh, implemented this week. What that means about the lot, the friction disc is you can't have anything in the converter that pushes on anything that locks the turbine, which is spinning, hooked to the input shaft, to the drive cover. So the way a lockup torque converter works, uh, I've got a video on my YouTube, it's pretty simple. You basically have input shaft spinning a turbine, some clutch discs and steels, hole in the middle, pump some fluid behind a piston, squeeze them together, and boom, your motor's hooked to your tire. So for NHRA to come out and specifically state that leads to believe that they have speculation or word of multiple, multiple cars or potentially the threat of that happening. Uh, now, there's all kind of stuff that folks are doing with fluid dumps and internal orifices and mechanical linkages, shifting the car and closing the feeds and doing all this bullshit. Uh, I am happy that they are trying to police it more. I wish they would take more of that stuff apart. Anybody got an opinion on that? Courtney's like lost. You don't even know where we're at. I'm a, listen, I'm not. It, I almost like, dropped a hard R there. I'm not stupid, but that's not my pool. I know. It's just that uh, your facial expression was funny. Well, I was yeah. I was actually, if you if you would like to know, taking our list from the text and creating a list here so I could help keep us on track. Okay, good. That's what I was doing. Uh, <laughs> so a, a telltale sign for cars that could have potentially been been running uh, such technology and their torquing converters and those that were not would be the mile per hour portion of the time slips. Correct. Well, what correct. What it does is it allows you to run a far looser torque converter than what you could mm -hmm. normally with a torque converter. You have to pick an end of the racetrack to race. You either have a car that's bad, fast up front, really loose and it'll haul ass early, but it doesn't have the, 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 the clutch down track to pull a bunch of speed or you can, pick a car that hauls ass out the back and it struggles early. Well, what a lockup does is it allows you to have the best of both. So what you'll notice is cars that have unusually good 60 foots and unusually high mile an hour at the same time. Normally, and what we do, it would probably pick up on average three to four miles an hour uh, between races if you were to install that. So I don't know. We don't run that type of transmission or haven't yet. We uh, are getting ready to adapt and go towards that direction. Uh, but we, we don't run that. So I don't have a, a lot of, information it was just peculiar for the tech department to come out with a rule with no explanation and then right after a race so if there was a car that say had it 
and now they are not going to have it when we arrive in Chicago. You'll be able to tell. If all 53s and 252s and all that go back to 248s and 249s, you'll know that there's some shit happening. If everybody still hauls ass and runs good, everybody's just doing a great job. I got a 248 hot rod. Yeah. Mine's good. Brutally quick early. Like it runs very good early. Yes. Feels feels real good. And then it. Oh. Yeah. This is kind of like, not right. like you used to there, hair dryer. Oh. Yeah, you used to be messing around for half the track and then set and then fire out the back. Long dog. <clears throat> you know who got to see that multiple times? One time in the final round of the last race of the year in 2021, JR Great. <laughs> oh. oh man, he ripped loose button about the eighth mile. I could see his door, and I was like, mm. <laughs> this ain't good for you, big dog. For somebody who's been quarter mile racing against turbo cars for a long time. There is nothing more fearful than seeing the nose of that thing in your door at the eighth mile. Okay. Yeah, because it's always, coming. I always told Bill, Wild Bill, you got to keep me in front of him at the eighth. If I can see him at the eighth, <laughs> we're, we're, we're in trouble. Yeah. If I don't see him when we go through the eighth, there's a shot. But if I, if you look over and you see that that hood poking, Sandy Frigo crushed me one. Well, crushed me several times, but he crushed me one time bad at the eighth mile. I didn't even see him. I look over there at a thousand, and all I seen was the wing and i'm like god dang that's so they're impressive quarter mile for sure but uh, i agree that i would love to go back to manual shifting i think personally they should take dumps completely away any fluid manipulation it'll hurt certain combinations but just give them some weight whatever it takes to make it to make it fair if it hurts them 300s give them 30 pounds off whatever it takes uh, and then there won't be all the bull crap about who's doing what i mean the only ones at this point that would be hard to drive would be ricky's car Right. Harder. No, I don't. Ricky's running a converter drive. He's not using a dump. <laughs> no, I'm talking about if we had to go back to shifting them. Uh, for sure. Yeah, because that thing gets second gear. But Jeffrey Barker ran a five speed uh, and did a very good job. And we were pulling second gear like a pro stock car. That thing was in second gear going by the tree. And he did a good job, but it was difficult. It was the hardest car to drive. Jeffrey's really good, though. Yeah, he's pretty Jeffrey's good. Jeffrey's a special guy. But we put manual shifting in, and then three-quarters of the field almost crashed and couldn't race anymore, so we had to put the auto stuff back in. God. I loved it. It gave me like a 400s advantage back then. Yeah, just give you something to do in a pro-charge car. Right. The problem is that thing's revved up so much and so flat, you wouldn't know when to shift because the hey, shift was on the whole time. Well, that's true. That's true. <laughs> You'd have to do it on time. That's true. So that's, uh, that's kind of what we got in the pro mod. Side of rule package. Cool. How long we got till duck comes on? Uh, we about ten minutes before we okay. get into the hot and saucy section of the fajita skillet. Uh, are we gonna Are we gonna finish with him and that be it, or are we gonna go to some NHRA? Research? We've got we. I don't know that we can get everything done before we got go to him, but let's get on to NHRA um, Vegas, That's and then we'll just go down the list. We have. We have enough racing that we have to talk about or we're probably going to have to not – We'll have to, when he's off, we're going to have to cover some stuff. I don't think we can get to, to NHRA, Vegas, PDRA, Mount Motor Pro Stock, Pro Stock Drama, Pro Stock Bike Drama, talk about the Masters, talk about tractor pulling and get all Can that. we get a, a quick uh, comment comments pool on yay or nay on the four wides? I just I, – I am anti-four wide as they come. I I'm will gonna, say. And I'm good at it, like – uh, it's a complete advantage to me on the starting line, but I can't stand that shit. It's it's a lot, but I feel like in the funny car final, I saw a few people commenting about it. The funny car final this past weekend was what four wide has been needing to happen and what it was created for, but it doesn't happen enough. In my opinion, they were, it was freaking photo finish down there and Bob Tasca. I've seen nothing. Finished. But his ET was the slowest. And he won. So it was a triple hole shot, which was pretty freaking intense. But all four cars made it um, all the way to 1,000 foot, almost a quarter mile. And it was absolutely the coolest four wide pass I've ever seen. Now, with that being said, I fucking hate it. <laughs> Let me touch back on this question. Pound ground, uh, we hope real soon. <laughs> uh, Sydney's car went a little right on the first run of qualifying. Had a transmission issue second round. And third round, it went right. And... Uh, head to a board and it's that easy to do that. Um, but we hope real soon. Um, four wide racing, I always thought gave me an advantage as a driver. So yeah, I it definitely does me, but 
but it is a nightmare as a crew chief. Uh, it's even just a logistical nightmare because somebody was trying to change the lanes. We were trying to do too fast, too tasty inside qualifying lane choice with too fast, too tasty. Nobody knew where they stood. It was, it looked really hectic and the shuffle F of it all around. It just, it adds a layer of, of confusion that honestly doesn't belong in drag racing. And I think I came up with the perfect solution this weekend because I'm the smartest person alive, right? Okay. They finished the final, the third round. It, it robs the fans of a full show, right? You have three rounds, not four rounds, takes money from food, booze, gate, all the things. So why wouldn't we take this, the finals, make those the semis, the top two run mano y mano, like drag racing was intended by God for the actual finals and at least give one round of real freaking drag racing. Like, I don't know. I just, I think it's cool to see. We had some celebrities on the starting line this weekend that thought it was super cool. Yada, 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 but drag racing is cool enough. I don't think we need four. And I just like, I've never, and I've, I've yet to see any comment that says yes, love four wide. Most of them are no, or fuck that shit or, but <clears throat> all of your first fans like shake and bake fans will agree that, it takes away from the difficulty and ambiance of the sport. Okay. Yeah, it is. Listen, Jolie. Watching four top fuel cars blaze down through there at once. It's hard for me to watch them. Like It's, it's hard, hard to, to absorb what happened. Even like in the finals, one's blinking. Like all the other rounds, it's just two lights. Whatever two lights win. Then the finals, we forgot to ask. Like one blinks, one solid. Who won? Nobody knew who won. But Jolie did make a good point. Like, the the competition in a specific quad is wild. Like first round in Pro Stock, there was Erica, Aaron, Greg, and Sienna all in one. And that's like, that's, <laughs> thanks, Tim. That's impressive in itself. Like you can't pick two out of those four. You know what I mean? And so it, it was like that all the day long. But I just think it's, when points are such a necessity, it's kind of a clusterfuck. I know I have... I have been watching a session of fuel and a funny car blows the body off and I missed it. <laughs> like right. somebody and homeboys blowing back, blowing up back there. And I'm like, look, and then the body flies by and you just, you can't watch four of them at once. Not no, four. I didn't even know Krista Baldwin crossed the center line. Cause I was watching lanes like three and four. You, you miss everything. And then you're like, who ran what? I don't know. Well, but it, everybody That thing snapped quick. It did. did. Golly, I might have had a friction disc in that club in that torque converter. Could have, Everybody staged have. pretty well though <laughs> this weekend. They might have clamped it right on up. There was no timeouts. There was no, none of that. Like a couple of very aggressive red lights in pro stock. I don't know about anywhere else, but uh, I think everybody's pretty much getting used to the starting line. Even I thought Sienna did a really, really good job. That's an intimidating thing to come into no matter how long you've been doing that, but staging that pro stock car and doing that, she did a, she did a really good job as a, as a rookie there. I thought I was impressed. Yeah, Brad, I, I didn't know. It was, it's crazy when you guys were on the starting line and you didn't know task of one until we were got, asking each other <laughs> who won. We don't know. Um, so who did win? We got, that's not right. Yeah, Doug Coletta, yeah. Bob Tasca, Jag Coughlin Jr. Jaggy. Jaggy. And Jerry Don Tucker runnered up. He was the number one qualifier. That car's coming around. Shout out Outlaw Beer. Freaking crisp and refreshing. It was uh it was quite nice. It was quite refreshing. It was really, really fun. Richard, when we said who won, he goes, Who gives a shit? It's ours. Cause we didn't know if it was Jerry Don or Jag. He's like, Who gives a shit? <laughs> Oh, Richard. Can we talk about, uh, are you allowed to talk about pro stock drama? Yes. First of all, do you want to get into what I, the question I posted in the group thread today? And then yeah, let's go. So we, uh, this morning, I just said a, a deal of, of possible topics. And I want to know if, is Erica in a slump or are they testing new components? Because and let me, let me read some notes that I took. You go run like shit, but it's because you're trying stuff. Like um, before we get into that, I want to say, let's talk about the slump wins, the pro race wins, Gainesville splits a too fast, too tasty wins a too fast, too tasty runners up at the winter nationals shook second round in Arizona and was in the final of the four wide. So if that's a slump, sign me the fuck up. Well, it's not that it's a <laughs> slump. It's a non Erica like performance. It would be great for everybody else. We would all be happy, but it just, I, I didn't know. Are they, because normally she's low ET every round. And normally she's first off starting line. And a lot of times I know 
we do. We're trying stuff this time of year that some of it sucks. And it, you know, there's times we look lost and we're just testing stuff. I but will or, say just if running is what is good and competition's really tight. Um, in Arizona, she struggled on the starting line. Um, Arizona's it's a different starting line. We always expect to be two or three worse there. So we kind of throw that out. She was in her own head about it, but this weekend she had four double O's in a row. Um, I don't think there's any slump. She was 50 in the finals. I don't know what happened there. Just, just a weird deal, but she actually has been, been better on the starting line than she was at all last year. But um, I think honestly, we're not trying crazy new stuff. We're, we don't really do that a lot. Richard does like to save the winning for the end of the year, but um starting the year off with those couple of wins was crucial to the momentum since we didn't win a single round for the first seven races last year. Um, but this weekend, when it comes to qualifying, um, blue motor first qualifying run, second qualifying run didn't go into high gear. Third, we needed to make it down the racetrack. We were number 16. And then, um, fourth, we, we were second low of the round and kind of got there. So it's just, I think it's just been happenstantial on the qualifying stuff. Um, but progressing as she is on the starting line lately, it's so funny. I'm the first one to tell her this and I hope she's watching, which I don't think she is. Um, she gets in her own head and qualifying. She's 30, 40, 50 come first round. She's like, I can't drive anymore. I'm old. I'm the worst. Lyle, you've seen the total meltdown. And then she's 30 or 40 first round. Then she's 20 or 30 second round. Then she's teen. Then she's, oh, for some reason in the past four or five years, that's just where it's gone and it's not where it used to be. But, uh, but this week I even told her, I said, man, I haven't been able to call you double E double O in a long time. She was seven, seven, nine, eleven. So, um, so yeah, I don't think, I don't think there's a slump there, but also our other cars are getting faster. I mean, look at it. It's our guys on the top. And right. if it's not her, you know what I mean? She's a great driver. So like when you see that, when you feel like you're off, um, nobody puts more pressure on you than you. Yeah. And you see, her, you see her get better when she has to. And it's so funny. Greg was 50 red in the Too Fast, Too Tasty. He was 40, 50, and 60 in, in the eliminations. And she even said, like, I'm 38, and somebody tells me I suck, and Greg can go 60, and everybody's like, he's the greatest. <laughs> but I said, that's because you've proven to be you what you've done. You so know. 38 is bad for you, so suck it up. <laughs> yeah. But no, I don't think any slump there. Just, just happenstance, and our other crews are, are catching us. Um, all right, let's talk about pro stock drama and then we're going to bring on the chainsaw masker, the Florida chainsaw masker. All right, what kind of pro stock drama we got? So, um, uh, manifolds, it's always manifold drama, right? Y'all uh, can, y'all can, I'll shut up when duck gets on, but this is my turn. Okay. Um, uh, not you. I just meant, I feel like I've been talking for the last 10 minutes, but so manifolds are always the drama. We've had some issues of, the rule states, no diffuser, no screens of sorts. KB, um, we're okay with that. We've developed something great where in the past two seasons, we've shown that we're a little bit faster than them uh, with that specific no diffuser situation. Um, the rule has been turned back over and unturned back over and turned back over a couple of times. They came over in Vegas this weekend and told us that uh, they were going to overturn the rule again and allow them to do it. I don't know what caused it. I don't know if it was Hartford not running well. I don't know if it's KB feeling like they do. It's unfair or they can't figure it out, whatever it may be. Um, so we were under the impression that it was going to get overturned again. And as everyone can imagine, Richard hit every fucking chip imaginable because it's going to cost us a couple hundred thousand dollars, going to have to hire some new people. It's going to knock the people like the McGay Hayes smooth out of there because they've got to go back, do a bunch of new R and D, buy a bunch of new shit. Lump's got to figure that out. So we were expecting a decision today and we got a decision from the NHRA today. The pro stock committee has discussed the request for adjusting the current intake manifold rules. The committee has looked at all available information and data in consideration of the request. They have determined that the current intake manifold rules are in the best interest for the entire category. There will be no intake manifold rule adjustment or amendment to the current manifold rule. The committee has also discussed and is implementing changes to the intake manifold covers. Intake manifold covers will be prohibited starting April 26th. We appreciate your support. So we won, but everybody lost because now we can't hide what we got. And as anybody knows in pro stock, the only secret is the manifold. We put towels on, we have custom covers made. They're cool. We even have them all designed. So 
Intake stays the way it is. No diffusers, no screens of sorts. They've got to figure out direction of airflow themselves, but we are naked. Going naked, starting Going with. Naked. April 26th through the 28th, whatever race that is. I don't even know. That would be Chicago, right? No, no. That's oh, that's Charlotte. That's Charlotte. Oh, Next Charlotte. race. Wow. So what are you guys going to do? Because – I know that like I have, there's, there's most of all the performances in the camshaft valve train and cylinder heads and induction. What are you guys going to do when people are flying drones around in front of your pits trying to see what the hell's going on? You're going to have some spy. You're going to have some espionage. It's, it's be always been like, I, I always get in trouble. Like Kyle Bates, he, anytime there's a manifold in the background of any kind of video or live or anything, he's like, blur it out, blur it out. Richard's always had the mentality of, I don't care. Show them what we got. My guys are better. Our shit is better. Our drivers are better. We'll figure it out. He's the one who got the cars turned around a few years ago. If y'all don't remember that we used to be parachute out to the pits and now it's engine to the pits. He's been very, very, you know, I'll pull down mine if you pull down yours, if you will. So I don't think he's going to have too much of a problem with it because it's going to be across the board. But Erica and Kyle and Jake, they ain't going to like it. <laughs> we also pit our car backwards. Uh, there's times as an engine builder that I absolutely hate it. it. There is certain people in the pits that know when your motor is apart. You will have people that you don't see the whole race until you're putting a piston in. And then they're coming over there drinking a beer. Yep. Hey, how you doing? Uh, so there's times that that sucks. The fans love it. And I I, I, I support it. So we do it. Um there, I can't stand it when people take pictures of my intake port or when people are looking at the valve train when they're not supposed to. Uh, so you're gonna always going to have some fish heading going on. But for the most part, uh, the fans like it. Yep. Uh, they we've, do. Got to, we've got to talk about some stuff on the backside of this. I want to touch on the Camry Caruso crash and we have some more pro stock drama. Uh, we got a guest waiting in the background. I want to bring him on and let's get to the small tire side of things. Uh, last time we had Duck on, we almost got thrown off of the internet. The SEC sent me a letter, and it could be the same way tonight. If you guys do not see the parental warning in the left screen, that means put your kids to bed and don't let them watch this portion of the Shake and Bake show. Uh, with no further ado, let's bring on the Florida Chainsaw Massacre, Donald Long. I'm going to say hi to Courtney anyway. Hey, Courtney. Hi, Duck. Me and Courtney are talking about some pro stock, some 002 lights, yeah, hidden, hidden intake manifolds, and all that. And some, yeah, we got, <laughs> we got one in the trunk, one in the back, one in the front. All right, so your blood pressure looks pretty good right now. Like, you don't look like there's no veins popping out of your head. I already got a gag order, so I'm gonna have to, I'll probably go into prison after this deal. All right, so the last time we had John, we you'll be talking, fine. We're talking about lights out. Let me get my sticky note Rolodex ready to go. Um, what's been going on in promoting? What's been going on in your business side of racing? We're all, most of us are kind of in the business side, but you're in a different portion of it than me, myself, uh, than myself, Lyle and Courtney. What's going on in duck world? Uh, and what's coming up? I think putting out fires that you started is what's going on. It seems like everywhere or, well, I guess. Did, they, I, but did I start them or did I extinguish them? I think you brought it. To the forefront, there was a fire, maybe. Uh, okay. so, but I guess just, um, you know, getting ready for Battle of Thrones, of course. But um, a lot of people, a lot of a uh, lot of CB fast hatred out there, I think. A lot of shadow, a lot of shadow haters. And um, <laughs> I, I think you sent me a message a week or two ago and it kind of made me laugh. I told my guys, you told me, you said you have no idea how many people hate you. Yeah, he does. <laughs> and, and that's a true statement. I'm um I'm gonna be honest with you. I think it's a toss-up between the people that um want to kill me from the no prep side and um coming after Stevie Jackson. So I think that um I think you woke up some people a little bit in RBW and um they're um I think you caught them. I think uh she was using the, the pants down term a couple times earlier there. So I think that you caught some people with their pants down a little bit and um they're they're a little bit behind, you know. So I think that um I think they once they get caught up a little bit, um, you know, if you go back to the um the PDRA race this last weekend and um you look at what um 
those guys were running out there with a pro charger, you know, three speed for three speed, uh, 92 over versus pro charger. Um, obviously, uh, Brandon was out there <coughs> tuning, um, tuning on his, uh, his car. And so, you know, I, listen, I don't have any doubt that the, the, in RBW, the pro charger guys can run with you. I, I really don't. I don't really have any doubt about it. Um, I, I don't know. What's your take on that? I don't, I don't know why they're all as slow as they are um right now and i mean that's not me being cocky that's just going off of past performance i think and this is this is kind of a factual statement when we said we're coming back to race i told you that you could watch and by the second or third race the field would pick up a tenth from where it was well the field picked up a tenth at the first race from where it was no and all that is spawned just from competition the reason we love our sport is because uh fans like to see us duking out and, and, and racing up there. I think it's taken them a couple of races to, to make the kind of changes that they have to make to run max effort. And I don't think we're seeing them run max effort yet. No, I tell you, I, listen, on a serious thing, I was extremely impressed by uh, Luis and them, um, screw blower versus screw blower. Sure, um, for sure. I mean, they came out in the first race, really. They, they, they flipped it over from a nitrous car to a, um, to a screw blower. They came out. I mean, they were within a number or two, a couple numbers of what you ran. I mean, right out of the gate with it. I thought they were doing extremely well. Me too. And I, and oh, I, hope, they, I hope they haven't messed with it because to me, I mean, they would be. But, you know, it's funny. You go back last year. Everybody's running, I don't know, 55, 6, 7, 8, 9, all these, you know, crazy things. And now all of a sudden everybody's going between 48 and 52, you know. So like you said, it, it picked up, you know, I'll say a 10, but it picked up a shitload. You know, I mean, it, in if a you hurry. Average, if you average last year's DT, they average a 62. And right now we're trending averaging a 53 to 54. So you, you're right. Wow. It's not a 10. But it's the same cars and the same people. I just think it's taking them a little bit to get them off a of cruise control and get them max effort. And I'm not saying they're not trying. Luis impressed the hell out of me. When he came out, the fastest I had been is a 54. He come out and went that 52. And I was like, I told Phil, I was like, we got to get to work. Like this man just, out, just covered us. Uh, and I told him, you guys did great. And they're going to be contenders. Like they're not like done doing good. I mean, no offense. They didn't burn the back window out of their car doing it. Yeah, I burned my back window out. And we'll continue to. And that's the difference. We went out there, caught on fire, and blew up like the first run. And Jeffrey looked at all, Jeffrey Barker looked at all the crew guys. He said, welcome to the team, boys. <laughs> And that's a fact. So where are we at? We're going to get to LDR, but let's kind of focus on radio versus the world. Where are we really at with parity? And is running as fast as we're running, helping or hurting the class? Listen, I, I think every time, um, every time that we've slowed down RVW, it has damaged the class in my opinion. And, and, and here's the thing. The only reason that I was ever slowing down RVW was to try to keep the nitrous guys in the mix. Okay. And at this point with who's out there running right now, um, the, a nitrous car can't keep up, you know, I mean, we, me and you've spoke about this, you know, go ahead. I want to hear, I want you to say it for the record. I know you're just you're, 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 you're like turning I just, red, you're turning red and shit's coming off your face. How fast can KTR go with a nitrous car, legal nitrous car for RVW? I don't know why the, the nitrous RVW combination is so slow, and I definitely don't know why all these guys are swapping to a blower. The guys that are thinking that they're going to quit nitrous racing and just put a screw blower on and go run up front is erroneous. Um, I don't. If I purpose built a customer a nitrous RVW car and went out and run it, I do not know – how you would make it go slower than 47 or 48. I don't know what you would have to do to it to make it that slow. It's 2,250 pounds. It makes 3,400 horsepower. It can have unlimited gears, a lockup transmission. And I just don't know why it would be so slow. Now, I haven't ran any of the good motors that they have now, so maybe that's speaking out of term. But when we were killing everybody running 54, we were 75 pounds overweight running a car that was 10 years old with a 959, like now they have 12, six deck height, thousand cubic inch motors. Um, like just the engine alone makes 150 to 200 more. Every time I pick up 150 horsepower, it runs faster. Now other people in other combinations don't seem to do that. We got all these new model motors and new updates and all this stuff and new blowers and bigger stuff. And they don't seem to pick up, but 
I don't know how a KTR built. Now, I'm not saying I can just take somebody's clapped out 632 and go run 45 with it. But if I built a RVW Pro Nitro, I mean, a, a real nitrous RVW car, I'd run 45. <laughs> Lyle, what do you think? You're over here hiding. No, I'm not hiding. I'm not, I'm not hiding. No, I think that, I think that the, well, if you were driving, somebody decent in the seat was driving, but I think you put just anybody in the seat of that thing and it's crashed in 10 runs. It, it is it is easy to crash as fast a, as we're a car a car that light uh, with that kind of power trying to go that fast like somebody's crashing that thing and hell you or you or me may crash it um but I think that and this is my opinion so fucking take it with a grain of salt <clears throat> but I think that if you rewind to the petty files from back in three or four years ago or whatever we're talking about I don't. I don't think that with the current rule set that the pro charge car, even though they're not there yet, can go much faster than where you're at now. I don't think. And I think what, that that's what? I think I think at the weight that they're at and where they're at, I think 47, 40, 47 is probably a really good run. 48 or 49 is a is a very good run. And I don't think that that they're going much faster than that. Like a 45, I don't think is achievable achievable for the pro charge car with the current rule set. Well, and I don't, I, think it's, I don't think it's achievable for the screw either. Like I, can, I, I'm with you. Right, but I mean, listen. I, here's the deal with the, and I'm messing around with you know because Steve Patty when when he puts his when he puts his hand on something they go out there, you know, and it's and he just completely decides this is the car I'm going to tune on. He's not all over the place. The bitch is going to run. Okay, that it's just going to run, and so. When they went out there, like before the same thing, you know, you have cars going 53, 54, 55. Well, Petty went out there and they went 49 with it. I don't understand how in the world, and this is just my opinion of it, that how we can have a car that could go 49. And even Jason Lee, when they went out there with theirs, and he told me it's within 10 to 15 pounds, okay? And he said that they got better motors, way better motors now, right? A couple, couple more better than what it was three years ago. We got better tranny, better converters, a bigger blower. They had a 138 back then. Now they got a 140, 99 or whatever. And I don't see any reason that that car can't go. I mean, how can it only go? How can you go from a 49, add five or 600 horsepower and go fucking 52? I just don't understand that. I, I just, I, I, it stands back. I don't think, I just don't think they're there yet. I think they have been able to eat a hot dog for so long and not had to run the thing, I just think it's going to take them some time. Oh, if you leave them alone, by the time we get to good air again, they're going to be competitive. Well, I can tell you right now, do you remember when Putin rolled up on Ukraine? <laughs> well, that's what's going on with fucking uh, Pro Charger right now. I promise you, you're standing there with your little green and yellow fucking flag, waving it on the, your side, and they're fucking marching. And they're like, there's nothing to see here, Stevie. We're just we're just doing a little freaking just a uh, little training exercise. But I promise you, there's like seven of those bitches, and they are all freaking, they are locked and loaded for your ass right now. I promise you right now, when they unload, you're going to see like two screw blowers and 17 fucking pro chargers. I oh, I know it's coming. We're selling cars and motors I, and parts. I can all promise you that every damn one of them almost out there is either going to have a PTP or a PLR fucking shirt on, bro. Red <laughs> hats and shit, they're going to be flopping fucking turning hats around. But isn't that what makes it exciting? Isn't it, that what, what yeah. what's exciting about it? It does, but I'm just telling you, bro. You're like, man, you're going to be like that fat kid in kickball. I'm telling you, bro. They're coming for you. I'm not fucking – listen, that fucking idiot Brent that posts shit too, and I, I haven't said this earlier, that if you ever wanted to know if there's fucking side effects from the COVID vaccine, you just got to oh, fucking boy. just, just – Fucking catch that guy, bro. Because I thought that was your crony. That guy's fucking dumber than a pet rock. And I'm fucking <laughs> telling you right now. That's it's fucking oh my god, man. Sometimes I just want to punch my fucking self in the face just not to read the shit. Do it, do it, put right now. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to fucking see that so bad. Um, I actually have talking to talk about Brent Sancucci on my notes. So while we're talking about that, he posted on the internet yesterday. Uh, about uh, qualifying in HRA and giving me some shit about running, not good running HRA. And I, I told him on the internet, which means nothing, that I will enter an NHRA competition when he does. <laughs> um, 
The only that's fucking a special way that's, kind of that's a special kind of stupid. The only fucking way that guy is going to be in a winner circle picture is if he comes over on your team. That's the only fucking way. Not allowed in my winner circle photo. If, if, if you, he made a walk, if he, he made a yellow jacket, so I look like his dumbass. I'm not putting it on in one. If he circle. had a wall made to hang shit. It's a bear motherfucker, and it has been for a long time. They're going to condemn the fucking house, and it's going to be bad before they hang the first picture up there. Uh, Jeffrey Barker wanted to clarify that Marcus Burt was not 75 pounds overweight. He was 115 pounds overweight when he went 23.65. Yeah, I'll have to look back at my notes, but I think it's accurate. And, yes, a nitrous car can get that light. Like, super, no, no problem. You just got to just build it correctly. I mean, you can't put a 300-pound driver in it, but absolutely you can run it. Uh, you can build any part. Sorry, Jeffrey, you're out. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, if Jeffrey wanted to drive one, I would take. I'd let him do it just because I know I got two or three in the bank on the start line from everybody. So I, I would be okay with the fantasy. I am going to tell you something though. You know, I've thought about this. Uh oh, Annette's in, Annette's yeah, Annette's in the house. We got uh, Annette's on. She's ready to karate chop some mother mother truckers after. You know, she used to really hate me, and I think now, like we're we're breaking bread and shit. I mean, I might be able to might go to dinner. Or something. You do grow on people, Doc. Dinner and a movie, or I don't know, something like that. There are a lot, not a lot of people you could say would want to go to dinner and a movie with you. She ain't one of them either. <laughs> oh. I'm going to tell you this. <laughs> it is one of them people that if she don't like you, you do not want to go to dinner in a movie with her because she got no filter and will shank your ass. Man, I'm going to tell you right now, she's been on my ass since Yellow Bullet, and I just now got myself out of the fire. I'm definitely not going to say anything that gets me back in there with her. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I took a long time, bro. Like, I had to whine and dine and a bunch of shit to get out of that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so you think in RBW parody is good. I think you better leave fucking Scott Tidwell alone. That's what I think. Because fucking you're going to be like in a phone booth with a tiger. That guy's fucking got like, that guy's got like fucking, I don't know if he's got Richard Freeman money, but that motherfucker's got some money. I'm telling you right now. Richard Richard Freeman don't have Richard Freeman money. I'm going to tell you right now, that motherfucker's going to bring 12 cars and stomp your ass one day. When it happens, you better just be like, I had it coming. He'll He'll need 12 to stomp me. Um, That's a good rivalry that's budding. Uh, A lot of respect on both sides. Um, it, it, it's, it's good for the sport. I just hope they come with the same combination I have and that there's no loophole racing going on. As long as there's no loophole racing, I'll cover them by two to five hundreds all the time, forever till the end of, <laughs> till the end of racing, till the end of RBW, till it's just VW. There will be no, no time <laughs> no same combination I have and outrun me. It's not going to happen. Never going to happen. Not so, in America, not in Canada, not in any state, country or province. All right, so if anybody shows up with a same for same combination, screw for screw, three speed, you said it don't matter what tranny, anything, you'll whatever tranny, just so you can change yours, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, if they come with RVW screw car, anybody, and they just, I need to know what overdrive they want to run, how many gears, what <laughs> kind of uh, loophole they want to do, D rotor, uh, any of that crap, and I can go like bolt it in there, we'll go race for sure. And we can just come race, and that's anyway. We don't need to make any of those stipulations. I, I'll run anybody on a 315 drag radio. They can come with a top fuel tractor. If it's got doors and you can open the doors on it, we'll race. <laughs> as long as they're not it looked funny. Look funny. You'd have to have a door like by a little fender, but it'd be funny. <laughs> um, They'll do it. <laughs> so we got a race coming up. Tell the fans about what's happening next week in right. North Carolina. So Battle of Thrones, which started off obviously as Sweet 16 a long time ago, um, this is the first time we've actually opened it up um, to where almost, yeah, everyone's only really had 500 fans to it. Um, I love it because just giving away the Thrones, I mean, it's the coolness. It's kind of like when you won yours, you're out there on a fishing boat with the freaking or the whatever boat you had to throw out there, you know. Um, so uh, Shane Stack still carrying around in the pits with him for like, Four years now, freaking. Ryan Markowitz has the coolest throne. Dude. He has his motorized, and that's – I am so pissed off about that. I had told my guys that we need to motorize the throne, show up, and he already has his motorized. So I can't, now I can't even do it. That's the coolest shit ever. That, the video – Courtney, have you seen the video of him coming through the pits or not? Yes. Oh, that thing through the pits, it is awesome. Dude, he's like – but that's why that's why you do the shit that you do for your winners is for shit like that. I, it is. I mean, it was like when – 
I wondered what would happen after they won the thrones. And to believe, I'll say this, I never in a million years thought that um, Shane Sack, and I love him to death, but I never really thought that he was going to be like the leader of the pack with the throne deal, you know? And uh, man, he he took it and ran with it. And, you know, he's just, you know how Stack is. Sometimes he's kind of quiet. He don't. He is pretty and, quiet. And so when you see him, when you see him pull up, right. And the door comes down and they unload that fucking throne out of the back of it it's and pretty- set it over there. And there's kids coming by and they're, and they're taking pictures and all that. Um, you know, that's to me when, you know, the fun part for me and, and to do it. Like, I mean, I love to talk shit and get it. I, I do, but, um, you know, I want the deal where people win something and they go, cause you know, let's face it really. You got, if, if it was 10 or 20 or $50,000 or whatever, shit, Stevie spent that on Pistons the last race or, or I had to win to go either or whatever, you know? And, um, you know, and it's like Chris Daniel and I, I, I love Chris, but he doesn't really need the money. You know what I mean? He really don't. But if he was sitting in that fucking throne, now I tell you right now, Chris Daniel's wife, she got to move that shit out of the way. If that throne comes in, all <laughs> that $25,000 dining room table, all them chairs, they're going to be pushed right to the side. Chris going that bitch right at the end of the table. And that's and that's to me the, the fun part. Like I hid those. Like me and Stephanie, uh, we ordered those up, had everything done, and we had them hidden in the trailer the whole event the first time. We never said we were running for thrones or nothing like that. So when we got down to those final four cars, you know, we backed them thrones out and put them there. And when people came by, you know, they were just like shocked. And that was, to me, that's the fun part of promoting, you know, is to try to come up with some um, new and exciting things for them to win. So we yeah. actually did the, the interview I did with um, Shane at the last race I was out of yours. We sat him in the throne that was sitting out front of his pit and did his interview from there. I didn't even see that one. Yeah, another one. He was in like a hammock. He's never just doing normal shit. He's just always laying around. He's like, "Yeah, I'll do it right here, laying down." <laughs> and if you, you know, go back to two thousand and eight, um, you started the cool trophy, cool winter circle deal. Like I have my first ever. It was limited drag radio then, uh, or outlaw drag radio. I don't remember. I still have that first cup. I actually took a picture with my daughter in it when she was like a month old, and I still have it. Like nobody did that back then, uh, and like the throne deal and stuff like that, the swords and the hats and all that shit. Like that is the stuff that that you remember twenty, thirty years down the road. So I think it's cool. Uh, my throne is in the middle of my shop. Like it sits in the middle of my shop. And if I'm ever chewing my guys out or they did a good job, I'm normally sitting in it. I'm like, all right, we're going to have a shot meet and I'm going to sit in the throne. I didn't get my motor out. I'd punch you if you yelled at me from sitting in that throne. Yeah, I'll sit in there sometimes and be like, <laughs> here, here. I, I, four score ago, we burned the heads off. You know, at the end, when I, when I get done promoting, and obviously I'm closer to being done than I ever was to starting, I just, I really do hope that besides <laughs> Everybody going, hey, this guy's a dickhead. You know what I'm saying? I hope that they're going to at least remember some of the cool shit. You know what I mean? Um, so when you say that, how, like, do you think that RVW, and we're going to talk about the other radio classes in a second, is it on the way up, stagnant, or on the way down? I believe, um, and, and this is, goes by, you know, people that I talk to about RVW, um, uh, you know, Paulo Juice, people that were running it before who maybe, you know, decided, hey, you know, they step away or whatever, um, cars are being built again. And when cars are being built for stuff, that's when you know the classes were up, whether it was <laughs> X275 or, or whatever, LDR, whatever the deal is. Um, there's way more cars now. Now, I'm not saying there's going to be 35 cars next year, but I think you're going to have 18 or 19 cars. And I honestly, I mean, a 16 car thing, Stevie, is, I mean, really, if you had – 12 or 14 cars battling it out for eight cars and they're the baddest things in the world, in my opinion, of course, a little biased, but um, I mean, dude, it's just, it's awesome to see that. I mean, you got no wheelie bars on them. You know, you got them out there. If we, if we really unleashed you guys, I don't know how fast they would really go, but um, they're going to outrun anything that's ever been ran. I mean, that nothing wrong. With, I think Todd Moore, you know, there's nothing wrong with their three forty five, forty six. I mean, I, it's, it's awesomely fast, but you know what I mean? Take a radial car that, you know, you went 348, you know, out there, you know, messing around, really. I mean, well, I'm saying take all take all the weight out of the car. Oh, yeah, no, and nobody wants to I mean, do that. Unlimited, you know, take your car, take all the weight out of it, put 160 overdrive or whatever the fuck y'all got on that thing. And that's how, how fast, 75. And how fast would it go, you know? It'd be I mean, fast. 
Uh, it'd be fast, but I, I think also that that's part of the lure of the class and the, and the and the radial deal. Radial racing got popular, I think, because it was a, a, a it was an outlaw way of racing. Everybody hates on you because of the way you promote. Everybody hates on me because of the way I talk shit. At the end of the day, is it good or bad? Yes, we get a bunch of bad phone calls. I get cussed out every day. I get hate mail where people want to carve my kidney out of my body with a rusty spoon. Like, I get that, right? But is it better or worse if we all hug in the winter circle together? I want people wanting to knock my head off. And I think Listen, here's the whole thing. If you take WWF wrestling or anything that ever was, and there wasn't what they had going on, you had never even heard of it. It would just be some piece of shit like some of these other guys put on. I mean, I'm sorry, like these other promoters or whatever. But, I mean, it's I'm, – I'm serious. At the end of the day, I mean, listen – I said this before. If you want, if you want to be fucking Wally Beaver or watch the Leave with the Beaver and all that shit, then fucking go ahead. But that's just not what I do. You know what I mean? This ain't fucking, this ain't that kind of deal. You know. And the, I mean, here's the whole thing too. I wish everybody, I wish everybody didn't. Some of these guys, man, they get their feelings hurt. For people who have multi millions of dollars, there's some pussies out there. I'm just gonna tell you right now. <laughs> Damn. Damn. I'm just saying. I, I'm just have to call it like I see it. I mean, well, I think that's in any class. I listen, think you can say that if about I had, if I had to give up my fucking man card to be a one percenter, y'all can just fucking kiss my ass. I'll fucking just stay with my five hundred dollars a week I make. <laughs> is a I you one, cash out of your, your pocket? What a one percenter is because I call them hot dog eaters. One percenters. What's a one percenter? I, you know, I think it, you know, I think there's a different. There's different one percenters, right? There's one percenters where they got to have every fucking thing their way. You know, everything has to be their way. They got to be parked in a certain spot. They got to fucking, they, they have to, you got to pat them on their ass and walk around and rub their shoulders and, you know, jerk them off and all that. And then you got other ones and they just send a check out, you know, like, Hey, let me help you with the race. You know what I'm saying? And, um, it, it's just, there's a difference. There's, I don't know if that's two percenters, if you one and one, but I'm just telling you, there's different multi-millionaires out there. I promise you that. And and the ones that you have to massage and, and you know, all this shit, man, it, it ain't worth it, bro. I'm just telling you right now. The battle, of, the battle of the Thrones, and I feel like I'm doing the only one talking y'all butt any time. Battle of the Thrones coming up next week in Rockingham. Courtney, you, you coming? I'm not. Yeah, no. here, Mark, she hates you. No, I don't. That's a... Fine. That's a flow and duck situation. <laughs> I don't know. Duck. I don't know who's going. I don't know if Don's going or what. What's going? But I don't know. They're sending me to PDRA with the with the weather sh forecasting to be eighty two to eighty five degrees. How fast will RVW car okay. field go next week? Well, let me go over a couple things because I've had some hate mail, so I want to address some hate mail on <laughs> the thing. So here here's the deal on the schedule. I've tried to be very clear about this, but so. The, the radio outlaw classes and the two no time is the only thing running like from six o'clock till midnight or one or two, whatever it takes to, you know, to get in qualifiers each night. Right. And so the next day you don't have to get up, you know, whatever at 7 a.m. or 6 a.m. And you know, people could, oh, you got there's 27 class of here. Well, Civil Wars are going to run um, Saturday morning until around five o'clock. And then we're going to prep the track and stuff again and get ready for, you know, Friday or for Saturday night for the elimination. And we're going to finish all the eliminations for radio outlaws and stuff on Saturday night. So we'll have civil wars during the day on Saturday and, and civil wars during the day on Sunday, but the radio outlaws are going to be racing on Thursday night, Friday night and Saturday night. Only. So if I get one more person, I think we're running, trying to run. They're like, how are we going to even get a qualifier in? And really you guys are going to be the only ones that are running. You know what I mean? So it's it's really going to – it should be a good layout, a good you know, a good system on it. Okay. Uh, big payout in RVW again, $50,100. Which is if you, win, if you win top fuel like three times, I think you get half that or something. Not at the Pro Superstar Shootout, my friends. Never heard oh, of it. There's that one race a year or something. Um, <laughs> I don't for now. It, I don't even think it counted. Who won all those races? I bet nobody even knows. I know, because I put my blood and soul into it. Doug Coletta, Austin Proc, and Erica motherfucking Enders. Who, who, who won ProMod? We didn't have it. But the next week, Derek Ward won, so I do know that. 
so you didn't have it then you didn't we have didn't. Any, you didn't have the fast cars then you didn't have any doors no we radio. honestly did not that we're gonna dive into that we did, did talk about radio cars we did talk about mending the two but west so no, very no, much no, wanted pro no mod fast, no to be cars. their own stars didn't at world series cars, huh? no just 341 miles an hour not fast yeah, I saw y'all had to try to slide fucking Stevie Baxton there like with a last minute invitation just because I had him all built up. I spent fucking three months building him up on the fucking internet. Next thing you oh, know, all of a sudden, all of a sudden it was a goddamn hidden invitation. Oh, it must have got lost. Not me. Yeah. I'm pro super so shootout gal. I'm just the interview gal at World Series. <laughs> it's cool though. They got that invitation out quick, didn't they? They once did. That, once that fucking KTR stock went up, fucking that goddamn fucking certified letter went out then, didn't it? Paul well, Barnett was invited early. Motherfuckers, there was. Oh, man. This is, this is, I'm, I'm just saying. Uh, are you coming to run with us at all? Hang out? Are you just doing beat locks or what are you doing? Oh, I'll be there. Yeah, that's yeah. It's kind of in the LB backyard. Are you gonna be on on site long? Yeah, yeah, I'm pumping shitters there. Do what? Are you going to be beat locking on site? No, fuck no. He's like, hell no. There's too much of that shit going on. Yeah, no, just, just pumping shitters. <laughs> just pumping shitters. That's it. <laughs> new, what new, new business. I got a new business venture. Oh shit! <laughs> My it's shit fucking, is your shit. It's fucking not true. Yeah, I'm gonna pump pump all the shitters out. I'm gonna drive it down the racetrack. Give it hey, the old one, old one pull. <laughs> <laughs> There's some track prep for you, duck. You piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> shitters, <laughs> shitters full. Oh man! Oh, this could be so good or so bad right here. I think, hey, Lyle, you gonna come help me announce up there? I got a couple things we need to talk about. No. The tower. No, at, not just no, but hell no. Why not? Thing. That'd be good for oh, Flo. I'm gonna I'm bring beer money with no diaper on it and put just put a <laughs> hot rod our, tune up. On our it. Slot when, I let, when I let go of the button, I'm gonna hang my finger out the window just like this. Fuck you, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> Clean up on aisle four, duck. Hey, hey that's a closet duck hater back. Actually, Stephanie actually has a thing already. You might want to put it up on the screen. Stephanie uh came up with her DHOA fucking Inc., which is a Duck Haters of America Incorporated. And uh she's actually the president of it over here. I bet. <laughs> oh, Courtney, she must have a fucking she must have an application then too. No way. <laughs> no way. I've never had a bad thing to say about Duck. Dude. Except late night. The only time I've ever said anything ill about anything Duck was how tired I am <laughs> at your races. That's L it. Lyle, Lyle broke out a couple beers. He's starting to keep dumping shitters on the track and everything. <laughs> Gosh damn that. it. My window is fucking me. Man, there's a lot of F-bombs and stuff. I'm glad the well, kids. The parental are. advisory is still up. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, we're fine. Okay, so no rule changes for RVW coming up. Met with some distaste. Um, what about the... No, but, okay, hold on. Hold on a minute. Oh, you are on. Let, no, let's back up. So at PDRA, the rules are even. The weight is even. Right. If we're talking about three-speed screw versus three-speed pro charger, right? Okay. So they're, they weigh the same. They weigh the same. Okay. They were one and a half numbers faster for the entire event last weekend. The, the, pro, charger, the pro charger was. The okay. screw went quicker in qualifying, but not a three-speed car. Okay. I guess it's – is it Derek Ward? Is that his other uh, – Yeah, yeah Derek Ward. Yeah. Right. And he has so, a five-speed, right? Correct. Yeah, with like 175 <laughs> over or something like that. Or something. But – okay, so hold on. So let's go – I guess so. Haney and them, um, which I said I know everybody don't even run that shit or whatever. Or I mean, sorry, Keith. Um, I think it's what is it twenty five or is it even? I don't uh, know. I don't know. I don't know the Midwest rule package right now. I know they run a slightly different package because most of their races are at uh, altitude more than East Coast. But I, I don't know that. I don't have that note in front of me. All right. So before we go, I want to. I just want your opinion. I know Lyle said his. How fast, in your opinion, can a one forty dash one pro charger car? I can tell you right now, Manny Virginia's coming for your ass. I know you ain't heard it yet, 
But and Manny's got some money too, so you might want to lock up your wallet because I think he's coming for you. I bet he won't come bet none of it. I don't know how much he's got, and I might can't match him and all these people with money, but they can get all I have. And I tell him that all the time. I might can't match your bet, but you can get all I got. I don't know how fast they'll go because I don't have one. I normally don't open my mouth about stuff I don't know anything about, but I do know that's that they're 49, and they should be able to run 49. Now, why they're not, I don't know. But but they have been 49 under the current rules. Well, they, they had to run smaller blowers then, but they should be able to run that. Other than that, I don't know. I'd be speculating. If I told you to run 45, I'd just be talking out of my ass because I don't have one. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. Usually, usually, you're always talking out your. Uh, that's <laughs> what I was doing about, but I was gonna let it fly. I wanted him to open. I wanted him to open his big mouth and say something, but he ain't gonna. He, he ain't well, gonna. I, don't I don't know. I'd have to get one and then bolt some. You'd have to put a real engine in it, and then you'd have to go run it and see what it'd run. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I mean, that'd be like me asking you how fast you could run in a in a run a marathon. You don't know either. <laughs> Get your sundial out. I'm more into pole vaulting than I am. Uh, if you would go to Rockingham and pole vault, the the people would buy a ticket. There's a lot of people that buy a ticket. Well, like a steak kebab, <laughs> <laughs> a duck kebab. Put that thing off there like a fajita. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I can tell you what a nitro crawl will run. I can tell you what a screw crawl will run. I don't know anything about the turbo. What it would run. Don't have one. Don't know what the pro charger would run. If you. This is, this is what we know for sure. Chris Daniels coming for you. We know freaking Manny Bajinga is coming for you. We know freaking Jason Lee's coming for you. Um, we know Brian Markowitz is coming for you. I mean, there's just one pro charger after the other coming. I'm just telling you. I I wouldn't be surprised if Luis and them didn't swap over to something else. They gave that screw one chance or something. They're going to swap over to something different. But – I hope Luis and them come still screw for screw. I mean, I, I really want to see – I'll tell you what I'd like to see, man, at the end of the day, and I wanted to do this with Ultra Street before when everybody – or X when everybody was doing stuff. I really want to see – you always have this deal where, you know, everybody thinks they're the baddest, right? Like as far as same for same deal. So if – whoever it is, and I don't care, but I want to see somebody on a different – Plat or the same platform, I'm sorry. I want someone to come run you, heads up for heads up. We already saw the nitrous deal that nobody could compete. No matter what they want to say now, no matter how many times we're racing history and knocking down fucking statues of Stevie Jackson and all that shit in the park, cutting stuff down, whatever. Uh, they also said you didn't know how to run a pro charger, which you won like 37 fucking races with that, but they said you don't know nothing about pro charger either. I did hear all, that. All I want... I mean, here's the whole deal. Everybody on both sides have screw cars, right? I mean, almost everybody. It, if Tidwell comes to, to RBW, I really want to see him bring a screw car. And and the reason I do is because I want a heads-up race to where there's no disadvantage on your side or his side, or I don't want to see someone show up at night. I want to see him run heads-up for heads-up, and let's just see what happens. I think everybody's afraid. In a sport, of, I, this goes back to the one percent of the pussy thing. I believe that everybody's fucking afraid to run another car same for same. I don't care what class it is. Nobody want they want to look and fi figure out something else to either run and bitch and complain about or try to get a, a small block with a fucking hemi head on it or 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 whatever. Sorry, David. Um, or whatever. But there's always something except for racing heads up. I don't understand that. Like, how come we can't? I mean, I don't want to say I want some NASCAR truck race. I'm not saying that. But I do, if everybody's going to talk shit, line it up one time, same for same, and let's find out. Who's the baddest? The, the, the reason you don't see more of that is because it's the same reason grudge racing is not as pre prevalent as what it used to be. People can't stand to wear an ass whooping. And that's on both sides. Like, the internet makes it hurt. Like, you know, if somebody comes out, me and Luis line up in eliminations and we both have the same thing and he wears me out, like, it'll be bad. Same way, if we go beat the shit out of him, it's going to be bad. So a lot of people are thin-skinned and can't wear an ass well, I get my ass beat all the time. So I, I, I'm, I'm not sure saying because, let me tell you something, I love Luis. I think he's one of the nicest guys that he is. And, and he, he helps us out tremendously. But there's this huge thing. 
on and not not coming from Luis, okay? But there's a huge thing from another side. I can't mention any names, but it starts with a P and it ends with an R. And what I'm saying is, is that we have this thing about mechanical and fuel injection deal. And I want to know, in your opinion, if it's a screw blower, is one faster than the other? Like, I always hear how, as far as like tunability, right? Nothing's going to be able to outrun electronic fuel injection deal, right? On a screw blower, whatever. Versus, so what's the difference in your opinion? It, to me, it just depends on what you like to race. I've got the quickest radial tire car in the world with mechanical, and I got the quickest car in Brazil that's got a screw blower with EFI. I, I don't know that there is an advantage one way or the other if you know how to run them right. right. I promise you, having an so I, I learned how to run EFI first. I had to learn how to run mechanical, but the being it being very good at running EFI, and I am, makes me a better mechanical racer. And being very good at running the mechanical makes me a better EFI racer. I don't know if there is a better or worse. Like there, there's electronic fuel injection has much more tunability and adjustability. It has more shit that can go wrong. So you got to balance that out. Um, I, I don't think that there is a right or wrong. I think it's whatever the tuner is more comfortable with. I've taken on customers right now and they're, they're hell bent on, on mechanical. And I got customers right now that are hell, hell bent on EFI. So it's just a different way to skin the cat. Well, what I want to see is screw blower for screw blower. I want to see one the baddest mechanical one versus the baddest fuel injected one. You know what I'm saying? I want to see all that. I don't want, and listen, I love all the different combinations. I'd love to see a Niger's car come out there and fuck you up, but I doubt it's, gonna, it's not going to probably happen, you know? Um, but I would love to see a same for sale. I would love for Scott Tidwell, because I know that they got a badass screw blower deal, right? I wish that he would just say, Stevie Jackson, I will fucking, we're going old school fucking pinks for pinks. I'm coming to steal that fucking car so I don't ever have to hear KTR again and fucking line up there and fucking and do it. You know what I mean? But I don't like the deal where we're going to, you know, I, I don't know. I don't like that. I mean, the rules I think are, are really close on that. But like before when someone would show up and there was all these huge loopholes and all that, I, I don't like all that shit, man. I want to see. Two of the baddest guys put it in the beams and fucking find out. So I'm waiting. I want someone to step up and call you out. We do. We all do. Like the sport needs it. The sport likes it. The fans like it. Uh, and I got thick skin. I understand I got a lot of haters. If somebody comes up with the same shit as me and beats the shit out of me, I'm going to give them props. I'm not going to complain because I had a bad light. And I'm not going to say uh, that I didn't get to build the engine I wanted to build. I give them props, but I want them to sit in the lane. It's easy for people to talk about it. It's harder to be about it. I'm more of the being about it group of folk. I said it this weekend, Eric and I were talking about you, Stevie. And I said, he knows his role in the sport, especially in the radial niche. And he, I think he leans into it and loves it and doesn't care what people think because you know, it's important to keep that shit alive. It's exciting. What are you eating? Don't worry about me. This is radial you've hour. Been, you've been eating and drinking and farting for the last 30 minutes while I'm on the fucking I'm show. I'm so hungry. Calm that down a little bit. <laughs> it's dinner time. <laughs> Here's what I can tell you. If you get an RVW car in Rockingham next week that wants to race, we will sit in the other lane. That is an open invitation. Well, But you got to get in the other lane. I, so listen. I'll just say this, whether they love you or hate you or whatever, and whether they love or hate me, there's more being talked about, about RVW, more cars being built and people when, listen, I'm going to say this like a long time ago, when you guys come up there, everybody crowds up to see what's going on. And when they call up those slick tire, no preps, people are heading to the shitters. So I'm just telling you right now, freaking, that's wow. just it's, it's just the way it is. I mean, it's, it's that grudge race that you had, Stevie, a few few races ago. Um, I don't remember where y'all were. Yo, SGMP. Yep. We saw a thousands in the thousand spike in the flow stream from that specific deal. Right, and, and that comes from and, and shout out to Xavier McBride and those guys for sitting in the lane. It takes mm -hmm. it, you know, but. And, and I've always been like this. I will talk as much shit before the grudge race as anybody ever in the history of the world. Very rarely do you see me after the race continue to gloat. I don't. And I told uh, I told the street outlaw guy, Jimmy Taylor, on the top end, I said, I, I appreciate you having the balls to sit over there. 
Like it may, you know, all these people that are talking shit about you, they didn't have the balls to sit over there. And I normally kind of let it go. That's why you don't see a lot afterwards. I wish we had more folks that had. <laughs> And, and he's honestly a seriously good dude, man. He, he is. Really he's is, a great you know. guy. Great for he's, the sport. He's, um, he's straight up. He's been helping out RBW also, you know, and it's like the guys. Most everybody so that's running at that level is a good dude. And I have, I'm rivals with them all. I want to crush them all. But at, at the end of the day, they're all pretty good people, except for Brett Sancucci. Yeah. Sancucci. Yeah. Um, um but, Listen, just for a thing, but in RBW, seriously, whether it's Chris Daniel, um, it, 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 which he's doing, like I, like he came out of nowhere, in my opinion. You know what I mean? I mean, he's he's been doing stuff on and off for however, but, man, for him to really come out and, and do as good as he's done so far, I'm really – I am really impressed with him. I really am. So Yeah, and I hope they – you know, I know they're going blower. I hope they stick with it and keep racing with us. Um, all right, so moving on from RVW, we're going to have the Screwblower clinic, clinic next week. We got uh, Pro 275 had no rule changes this race, correct? Is that right? Um, or did they I, have some Nothing tweaks? major. I think that um, for like the 521, um, the, the committee, I think it was a little bit on that, on that deal. Um, okay. You know, if you look at like even how fast, you look at Marcus Burt and uh, Tommy and I'm going, I mean, they went 360 flat at um, – at Valdosta, which I mean, that's fast, man. And then they come out there. Um, so they won Alabama, right? Who they beat? They beat uh, Tidwell and them in the finals, I think, in Alabama. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jason and them. So I mean, that's definitely. I mean, that that class is tight. I mean, it is. It's it really, is very competitive racing class. Yeah, it's a tight deal. I um, again, I'd like to make sure that I wish the Nitrous guys. You know, I was. I'm always trying to pull for the Nitrous guys because I always feel like they're the underdogs. Well, the fans do. I do. I'm a nitrous guy at heart. I love to see the nitrous cars out there relevant. Uh, Brian McGee's been running well. Um, you know, needs a little push, uh, but it, it, he's been making good run. Um, Mohal ran really well here recently. Oh, yep, Mohal's been kicking he, ass. So I just got over there. He went 63. Um, so I, you know, it's like he he's definitely right here. He just had a little bit of you know again struggles in the beginning of the year. You know. So in in Braden, and you know, he said, "Hey, this is my, you know, this would be my race." And they had some problems. I don't know what it was that they got figured out, but um, he definitely um, You're okay. It was definitely uh, awesome to see him. Uh, LDR, obviously. Um, again, I feel like in LDR, the nitrous cars, you know, need a little bit of help. I think it's going to be close now. Um, I know. I think Chad got twenty five. Uh, a couple of them got 25, I think, or something. So don't understand that going into the summer, but we'll see how it plays out. We'll be it. We'll be there. Uh, we'll be there to. We're not. We're not bitching and crying. We're we're good. Um, it, it very minimal rule changes, but we just got 25 off. Went to one race and got it put back on. That's because that's because you got the Stevie Fast Too Fast thing going on on it. Nope. Here's all I can tell you about Chad's combination, and I will say this. Nobody else is going to show up with a roots blower and run within five hundredths of us. It's just not going to happen. That's why it's the only roots blower in the class because it's freaking hard. <laughs> you got to have top shelf power. You got to have a top shelf blower. You got to have good air. Somebody knowing how to run it. And we're beating them with Chad's car because the bitch went nine fifty six sixty foot. So like it's just running good early. It don't run as good out the back. That's fair. The let's, bitch let's, went fifty six. Let's, talk, let's talk about that also. <laughs> I mean. Isn't it really that most of like even your car? I mean, you're going so fast, but really, you guys are getting it early, aren't you? I That's mean, it. We're not beating anybody out the back. Now we got more back split, but the, the blower car by design, if you 60 foot better, it runs better everywhere. <laughs> you get that motor revved up. My car hauls ass because the bitch went 875, 60 foot. And I mean, it runs nine flat during the middle of the day. Chad's car's got a Buick, and we're going, I mean, 956 was the best run when he set the record, but the thing lives. At, at all tracks in the 970s, and that's freaking getting it. That's just running your combination well. It's still 2,900 pounds, and it's a Buick. So, like, I don't know how to maybe do it as good as everybody else out the back, but running up front early is free ET. Like, if you'll pull that thing into low gear, that's how much will run good. If the <laughs> so you got to use all the gears? I've never even left in, in any gear but one. I just leave in one. Number one is the way to go. You just pull so, I use every gear all the time. 
I just keep on shifting them. Uh, to answer the question, Stephen, I would love – we did that one time before. Uh, that would be a no. cool race. You wouldn't probably get – it would take a very specific track that could have two different lanes. It's hard to do that race, but it would be cool. Last time, the slick guys kicked the shit out of us. So I don't think you. that's exactly Quit, what buddy. Yeah, they, they would, I was there. It was 2000. Yeah, that's that's right. And we got the shit kicked out of us. Team Radio got teabagged. You can't rewrite history. I was there. We got crushed. Where was this at? That was at Virginia. They did. Uh, they didn't even have a fucking race. They stole my idea. And fucking then they did some shit like, well, if you got four races on this, uh, y'all never ran that motherfucker down till final. You had them by three fucking numbers. Oh, we had them by 500. So we just smoked the tires a couple of times. Freaking they, yeah, but they didn't go to a final. They had like, Four things, and if this team won, you had a bunch of fucking retards on your side. <laughs> there was there was some shenanigans going on back then. Um, all right, Battle of Thrones people coming reaching, up. Like people reaching into my fucking copyright infringement deal and stealing my shit. That's what was going on. Dude, uh, everybody's know. asking about the unlimited race. What's the deal with the unlimited race? All right, so I talked to Luis. I, I talked to Luis about it earlier tonight. Um, I have spoke. <laughs> to some other people. Um, I'm going to give you a date here coming up. Okay. I'm, I'm in negotiations here, but it's the problem is it's a financial. Here's the deal. The problem is. See is, what happened was. See what happened see what, was. See what had happened was, is that we can't bring 200 fucking thousand dollars and every spectator in the country over here and fucking split the money evenly. You understand what I'm saying? No, sir. If Stevie Jackson raises that, there ain't no split. <laughs> no. But I get what you're saying. I'm just saying you're say you're talking about all the racers deciding to split the purse. No, I'm talking about being able to put it on a racetrack where I got you. talking about the gate split. Correct. Like okay. we can't we, it's yeah. not a race, like we're not it's not like we're paying out thirty five hundred dollars in a right. freaking contingency sticker. <laughs> you know, a little, you know what I mean? That's not what we're doing. So yeah. it's, and it's got to be, I'm not going to put my heart and soul into it and kill myself unless it's fair. That's, that's all. I'm not saying yeah. be unfair, but it's got to be fair. What you're saying is you're putting a lot of thoughts into it and we'll I'm have. Saying to a, I'm saying there's going to be a lot going into it. And like, here's the thing that on, um, and, and I get people own, own racetracks and they put out a lot of money. I, I get it. I'm not saying anything about that. But, but here's the whole deal, right? If I say, hey, we're going to put up $200,000 to win, most of the time, like when you go to the racetrack, though, a lot of them, they're just opening the gate, right? Now, some of them not, but I'm saying some do. Like, so it's like if you go to some Joe Blow's racetrack and we've done all the work and killed ourselves and they open the gate, I understand that's their racetrack. But it's like with a race like this, it just it, it has to be fair. That's all. Or it's not worth like if we can't put more money into radio versus yes. world or radio outlaws or I mean LD like Greg Blevins has been on my ass like to try to get LDR money you know to keep getting LDR money up and you know that's another reason that you know yeah. doing Battle of the Thrones so you know we can put more money into radio outlaws and stuff so like I'm all for doing the race and and I know that there's a lot of great sponsors out there and that's when we will have to get some of those one percenter pussies to put in some money to help out with this race. And then there'll be my buddies then for a little while. We'll get them in that parking spot to rub down, get some mineralized. Free tech card. Yeah, free tech free card, card, all that kind of shit. But at the end of the day, it's got to be um, – it just has to be fair, that's all. So I got you. But we will have some information soon. But I have a guy that is very – that is a fair guy. No, seriously, he's a, he's a, he's a very fair guy, and, and he wants to do it. And that's the, that's the difference is that he – he wants to do it. I've only spoke to him a little bit, but he's a good dude. Okay. So that's so the, coming, coming soon. Coming soon. Yeah. I mean, here's the problem. If there was a, if there was a deal between a three or four month window and it was just a simple thing and nobody had 975, 000, if we didn't have people putting on semi pro races, <laughs> semi, semi, semi pro and like fucking half ass pro and all that. Then there's extra dates in there, but and then you know it's like I've had my same date 
at Valdosta there, like, you know, and then I got, I don't know, fucking he does. Albert and Costello down the road putting on their shit on the same date as I am. You know what I mean? It's like it's there, there's no um I don't know. I just gotta get the, the the date is the problem because I ain't gonna go out there like we this is gonna have to be if we're going for the record. And here's the thing too, real quick about that race. Now there was supposed to be two things set and like everybody kind of changed it around. So let's go back to the original deal real fast. So it's a it's a hundred thousand to the winner of the race. Right, and it's a hundred thousand for whoever leaves with the record. <laughs> because people try to change that around a little bit, you know. They it's like they stole my shit again, and they'll come half ass it up and mix it all together with some ingredients that are all fucking like mildewed and all that. And it's like, but that's what I wanted to do with it anyway. I wanted to have where it's a hundred thousand for the one guy and a hundred. Now I would do the other deal where it's a hundred thousand for the tuner, but we need. We need someone to go out there and set their car on fire to, burn, to break the record. That's what I want. So what if it's the same driver and the same tuner? Does he, he get 200000 Well, yeah, if it's the same. Oh, well, yeah, it doesn't oh. matter. You ain't getting both of them. You don't worry about that. We're splitting it, that up. Y'all just worry about doing a damn shadow when y'all do that race. I can't tell you about all this other stuff and loopholes, but when y'all do that race, everybody needs to think hard about coming. I'm, listen, buddy. I'll tell you what. Bring me on the show for five minutes after the race, and I'm gonna have you the date for the race for the record. Because I've had a hundred people ask me about this. So you told us you were announcing on the starting line at Lights Out. We got fish headed on that shit. Yeah, you <laughs> fucked us on that deal. <laughs> you know, Lyle, when you do say something, it's not been very nice. I'm gonna tell so, you that. I'm just I'm trying to eat my pizza. So we can after Battle of the Thrones, come on, you're gonna give us a date. Oh yeah, gonna send one of those carrier pigeons, and that son of a bitch is gonna get lost. Oh, your your people who ship wheels to you, they can communicate. Yeah, that's so much. You get caught in the jet stream. Next thing you know, Russia. El Nino, El Nino will be out there. Vladimir, Vladimir will be. I'm getting with my worldwide my stepdad Dillard, and we're gonna get you a date. All right. (laughs) Uh. And like uh, what the fans are very interested in this race, like give us a good amount of time so folks, so fans can make travel arrangements and stuff. I mean, I have I have a date that I want to do it. To be honest with you, like um, Christmas Eve. <laughs> wow, you're such a prick. Today. <laughs> you know, I tried to ease, I tried to ease up on them because I got fucking threatened before I came on the show not to pick on Lyle, and now hey. I got. I got Nate a gag Freighter's, order. I think they gag ordered me and then let Lyle lose. Nate Freighter said well, he should not lose Lyle, Lyle for the I announcement, feel, and he wants to know who to call for a refund. I feel like I feel like goddamn <laughs> Trump in the courtroom with all those fucking Democrats fucking dealing with Lyle over there. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. All right. Well, Battle of Thrones coming up next week. Duck X Production, Drag Radio Racing, Hot and Heavy, Rivalries, Bust and Loose, Loophole Racing. It's like that soap I opera. Didn't say, I just want to make sure I didn't say anything this race to, or, or this show that I'm not allowed at Rockingham next week, right? No, I think you did good. You kept it clean. I think we kept it on point mostly. Uh, you didn't go off in the blazing path of destruction like last show where you about got us called by the SEC. Oh, I fucking right, dude. Trust me. <laughs> oh, man. But I um, I'm getting text messages. I'm I still I'm under gag order till after the race, and then <laughs> uh, and then I'll go ahead and fucking tell y'all. What Send I'm us doing. a screenshot of your uh, text message inbox after the show, please. I'd like to see who all we've offended and who oh, all. I, we've I, I think it's been pretty clean. I think it's pretty clean. I don't, don't do that. I'll be somebody I'll have done snapshot of the deal. Um, no, here's the deal though. And, and you know, I get, I have been beat up a couple of times by people um, where they think that, you know, um, promoting the shadow and stuff, you know, listen, I want what's best for the sport of drag racing, drag radio racing. <laughs> um, not like slick tire fucking shit, but I mean, talking about real racing, like, you know, it's like, it's like radio outlaws. It's like, it's like drag racing, but faster, right? That's just fucking, that's just the way shit is. But listen, I love it whether, you know, I got beat up about limited 235, Ultra Street not getting their qualifiers on time. Like, it's always what I've done wrong every time. 
But I'm just oh, yeah. you, and on a serious thing, I really – it's like the fans want to see some of the top classes more. And so, yes, I have had to make hard decisions before. But, um, you know, I think NHRA, you know, the, I'm sure when Top Fuel gets ready to come out, you know, they don't freaking – they don't do the car show when it's time for Top Fuel to come out. Well, they'll send you – they'll send you strapped in your car back to the freaking pit. And it's not like I want to be like that. Like I'm not trying. But you got to. to you got a show, and that's the show. Yeah. The thing is, is that if it gets down to the end and there's one or two qualifiers, then I really need to go in order of RVW, then Pro, then LDR, then X, and then Ultra. But it's not that I have that's the drive. way it is. It's not a personal vendetta against any of these guys. And you know, I I, I love all this class. I really do. But I get beat up that oh, you're only you know uh, Stevie, and he left you for three years. And you know, let's go over that real fast before I get out too. Yeah. Why did you leave, Steve? Go ahead and set the record straight. First of all, I hate when we're racing NHRA and get sent back to the pits too. And fans always bitch about it because there's a lot of pro mod fans. And I tell them all, be patient. The fans are here to see Top Fuel. The majority, oh, we're not. We're here to see Pro Mod. And I tell them, eighty percent of the people here came to see Top Fuel. They're gonna run Top Fuel. So, like, it, you know, I get it. And, and I hear this all the time about me abandoning drag radio. I had to sell the car. Lay down. Like you guys think that I had a, I got like a silver spoon or something and have money or something. And I can just buy cars on demand. Yeah. I, you're rich. You can't hide money because I had to sell the race car. <laughs> I didn't have a race car. So like, it's not like I just wanted to quit RVW racing for three years. I didn't have anything to go budden and budden and make the smoke. Like you gotta be able to go button, 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 button. And it just wouldn't do that. Like, I didn't have anything to do that. So as soon as I can build me something to do that, and it took me two years because I'm not wealthy, now I can go button, 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 and make the smoke again. So you're right. not one of those pussy one percenters? I, I am not a hot dog eater. I am the full maximum dong. That's the first wiener reference I've even used. Oh, full dong. God, it was. It was. Courtney likes a wiener reference. She likes Canadian bacon what reference, too. All right. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't Lost offend anybody too much tonight. Don't ever apologize for being offensive. If you're no, not, somebody, you're probably no one percent. Um, we appreciate you coming on. Uh, like you or hate you, uh, your style of promoting is unique. It fills the stands. Uh, we need everybody that's towing the line in motorsports to tow the line in motorsports. So, um, appreciate you coming on. All right. You got anything guys. you want to say before you roll? You got anything you, you got anything you want to? Any sponsors? Any plugs? No, I don't like none of them motherfuckers. Um, <laughs> uh, except for, except for uh, uh, TVM Brakes and uh, Motion Race Works. Uh, and, of uh, and course, Matt V-Locks. And Matt V-Locks, of course. Besides, and uh, Stephanie. And then Boss I was about to say. <laughs> um, <laughs> about well, to turn that carrier pigeon around. You guys hey. I, really, I, really am, um, I really am curious what's going to happen. I do think that uh, – Everybody's coming out gunning for you, which is great for the sport. They are. Um, I hope that some of the fans will come out. Uh, we only had a couple months to put together Battle of Thrones, really. We kind of got sh shaked down a little bit at the other. Um, we were going to go to a different track, and they sold ownership, management, all that kind of stuff. So, um, But we uh, we picked Carolina again anyway and uh, got over there, and they've been, they've been super great to us, uh, Dan Van Horn. They've been good, man. I think they're really good. Um, you know, it's awesome with obviously um, back in October, we're going to be going back to South Georgia, uh, which is double points. They call it the double penetrator because everybody gets screwed at the end of the year with the winner reference number two. But with uh, Raul and the uh, old double penetrator, the double penetrator. I'm serious. Like, uh, Rob, like Rob Goss was ahead by like 375,000 <laughs> points, and Kenny Hubbard. Penetrated his ass and fucking came. Nobody's right. worried about Rob Goss and LDR. That's gonna be. It's, we got that covered. Got that no, maybe not. Got time like, to get into that, right? Um, know, what else is cool? Real quick before I go, it's like so you got rolling them putting all kinds of money in a South Georgia. They they that thing's come like it's it's really phenomenal, right? They put showers in all kinds of stuff, and then you got the guys who bought Rockingham. They went in, redid all the um, the concrete, and like it's really cool. People putting money into the racetracks, though, you know yeah. what I mean, and, and and making them nice. You know, it's nice to roll in there, and um, you know everybody's sitting there ready to go. So I love that. Yeah, anytime you see anybody investing in tracks, it's investing in the sport, and uh, we're I'm excited. We're we're excited. To, I haven't been to Rockingham in ten years, and I, and I'm excited to see how the surface does. 
uh, how the prep is, um, and, and it's going to be. I'm excited for next week. I'm excited to take out everybody that's talked shit to us for the last two weeks. We're going to come see if if, if who, we're going to see who the daddy is next week. All right. Well, when we come uh, when we come afterwards for the race for the record. I do have some negative – I mean, some things to talk about some of those guys. Um, and okay. I'll give you the date, and then uh, we're going to address this uh, these uh, turbo cars, too. That think Turbos they're... and loopholes and stuff. You know, and, and let me tell you something. There are some 100 – there's a couple people born too tall because I can name a couple people. We're going to wait, but they just suck off. They should have been midgets. They honest to God should have. That way, when they're sucking off the people, they're right there, fucking the right level. Because I'm just telling you, I'm serious, dude. I there's some people on there, and they post they shit don't. like they're driving the motherfucker's car, dude. Stevie, I'm telling you. When uh -oh. we'll talk about this later. I, we're, I gonna get, we're gonna get that on the next episode. Next time we're checking. Donald, thank you for coming on. We appreciate you. Thank you for your time. Talk to Courtney, you soon. Thank you, Lyle. Nah. Yeah, Stevie. <laughs> yeah. See you back. Thank you. Man, I hate to cut that off short, uh, but we got a lot to cover. Courtney, you said you have to blaze out soon. Pretty right? soon, yeah. I just Pretty can't stay on I'm freaking starving, and I'm picking at this. What are you eating? I ordered a pizza. I haven't had a pizza in months, and I didn't have time to cook dinner tonight, and I'm so freaking hungry. I went on a walk run before the show, and I'm, like, nauseous. So I'm eating. It's dinner time. I got you. Um, all right, so let's blaze through some of the stuff on my topics and questions real quick. So we got through the pro stock drama. Do you know anything about the pro stock bike drama? I don't know anything about that. I, I wish I did. I don't claim to. I'll figure it out. Um, I don't know. Okay. All right. So I'm, I don't Sorry, know. If anybody in the comments does, I'll, I'm just going to text Angie in the morning and see what's going on. But I assume it has to do with all that. Jackson Lambert, chill the fuck out. All right, we've got to talk about Camry Caruso crash and Mount Motor Pro Stock. I don't know nothing about the Camry Caruso crash. Yeah, that's a shit-eating grin. I, listen, I don't know anything about it. I've heard some things. I've speculated some things. I've watched some things. We've got some input. But I don't know. The Wren was aborted. Um, it seemed like maybe it was still in gear, uh, the way that that rear end locked up. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't even see it, so I have zero. It opinion. was pretty bad. She aborted the run. She shook. She didn't qualify with that run. That was Q4. Didn't qualify, and it was it was well after. I mean, she was out of it. You know, she was only going 140 miles an hour um, at the stripe. And, uh, oh, Vance. See, I was going to say, I bet it has something to do with everybody being mad at Vance and Hines. Um, but, again, I, I don't know what happened i've heard some things sometimes shit just happens but it just it just was a bad deal she hit both walls broke her leg pretty bad i guess i, I heard femur i don't know if that's true but she was way up in that front end and and shit went awry so i don't know if i just i just don't know if maybe brakes i don't know if something locked up I, again if she was in gear when she hit the brakes don't know but I, i've never driven a pro stock car i would never ever speak on it that's why I'm just saying all I got is hearsay. Okay. I don't know. And also just I, whatever I say on this matter, it's going to be bad because everybody thinks we hate her. Well, until they come out and make some kind of statement of their own, the rumors is, gonna. Gonna, is all we have to work about. Work They're on. not going to. And I think that's why people now have started to speculate things because if it was a simple answer, but I don't know. <laughs> the amount of text messages you have to subscribe. <laughs> about that okay i just don't know people can speculate what you want in the comments like i said i ain't a driver so i'm not gonna speak all right so we got pdra coming up this weekend in virginia Derek ward set the pro boost record at the last race with a three and he has been on fire i don't think he's getting enough ink i don't think enough people are talking about him um he's been running good for two years he beat me in the semis at world series of pro mod goes on to win the race Comes He's out been on the brink, kicking ass. Um, that's exciting. Uh, we're going to see a lot getting shook up at PDRA this weekend. I'm I like that um, Brian Schrader. He won last year. It was you know it was very consistent of the couple of winners that we had with Halsey and Franklin. Love them both, but everybody loves to see somebody new come out there and win. 
had a couple of first time winners. King Tut's back. Um, Johnny Placino still owns Glob Motorsports Park. And uh, that is something I did want to touch on. It's PDRA related. Mountain Motor Pro Stock is going quarter mile racing for points and money for the first time ever. Sponsored class at the NHRA, no longer exhibition. It is a real class at the NHRA starting in Charlotte. That we saw a couple of cars not show up to Galat. Alan Drinkwater, the reigning champion, Tony Gillig. Um, we saw some, some people not show up. And I'm curious because these are back-to-back -back weekends. We've got um, VMP this weekend and then the debut of Mountain Motor at Charlotte. I'm wondering if even more of those PDRA Extreme Pro Stock cars are not going to go to Richmond to go to Charlotte because a lot of these guys, they have real jobs, you know, they, they don't get paid to drive race cars and they've got to pick and choose where they go. So I will be interested to see now that Johnson's horsepower garage has put up some money for it, how that pulls the car count. And our girl, Randy Lynn just got her quarter mile license. So she'll be running Charlotte. Are there enough mountain motor cars for two organizations to run mountain motor? Absolutely not. Not competitive. Right? There's no, there's enough for a good, like we had 16 at Galat. There's the normal stacked up at the top. You know what I mean? The top eight are much closer than the rest, but everybody's got a chance to win. Um, so I don't, I just, I think people are going to make decisions like Johnny Placino, multi-time champ has said that he's not going to run the whole PDRA season. He's going to go chase some of that. So I think people are maybe going to chase some NHRA exposure and NHRA dollars over the PDRA championship, but still, you know, hit, both when the schedule will allow. So I think it's going to kind of be random and, and I'm interested to see how that shakes out. Hmm. Because pro stock. Hmm. But yeah, I think it's cool for the first time ever. We've got an actual class in the NHRA. So, and, and the fans love it. Like I think anyway, they tell us they love it. Those 800 inch beasts are pretty wild in the quarter mile and the fans really love the hood scoops and all that. So I think it'll be cool. Hell yes. Yep. All right. Masters was in Augusta last week. I don't know if you guys ever flew into Augusta during Masters week. It is a zoo. I had that on my list. Somebody commented about my Masters. Yeah, but that was that's 2014. Nice. That's the last time I went to the course, but that was a good year. I don't. I follow golf, but I don't watch it. But I we had the Masters on all weekend in the pit. It's kind of cool when anything's as ceremonial as that. It's cool. Yeah, I, I don't care anything about professional golf, but if you ever get a chance to go to the tournament, it is badass. It is something that it, it's just you can't really describe it. It's it's that type of deal. How and do I'm, you know that, Spencer? Spencer said fifteen hundred seventy-two PJs parked on the runway. That's crazy. Yeah, more air, more private jets, more airplanes per capita in Augusta that week than anywhere in the world. They I'm wondering if my girl Morgan found her sugar daddy. They close two runways at two different airports just to park jets on. Them, like That's jets. wild. I saw a bunch of TikToks and videos are just fucking stacked. It uh, it's, it's six thousand dollar ramp fee to come park for the day. A the day. Uh, <laughs> and that's not counting fuel or anything else. That's just to sit there. <laughs> it's pretty, and that's for a small. That's for like a citation. That's not for a Gulf Stream or anything. like Wow. That. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, we're doing something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I basically pay to go to the racetrack. <laughs> yeah. Um, somebody asked what kind of plane is the honky rocket? <laughs> honky rocket's a uh, experimental. Experimental. That's <laughs> what the fuck it is. Are you and still gonna said, go in it, Lyle? It says it <laughs> everywhere. It says it, literally you open the doors, experimental aircraft. You fucking sit down in the seat when you click the seat belt on the seat belt, it says this is an, ex an experimental aircraft. Are you sure? Well, I mean, I'm in here now. Click. There is a placard in front of the co-pilot seat that states that this aircraft does not adhere to FAA regulations and was constructed basically. <laughs> in Stevie's <laughs> <So>, garage. Stevie's <laughs> garage. <laughs> Woo! Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, car's experimental too. Um, yeah, it is a FAFO plane for sure. It's a right now type of deal. Well, I flew in and you like I one did. thing, one thing we had on our list. How much of a death trap it was when he flew it. <laughs> one thing we had on our list that we haven't talked about yet. Um, four races, four wallies for Coletta Motorsports. Oh yes, I meant to touch on this. It's on my list. Uh, can anybody stop Doug Coletta in top fuel? 
this season. Maybe. Do you think Doug Coletta is the new Steve Torrance of top fuel right now? Like, he is kicking ass. I know that there's a lot of badasses. It's I'm early, like, man. It's early. It's early. Look, it's early. They look good. Like, they look good. They do. Is And, and I mean – Again, I still want Sean Lang to come on the show, but like he's, you want to talk about slump? He had him a multi year slump and uh, kicking he's, ass. he's kicking ass too. And he's, you want to talk about a natural driver like Austin Proc? Like he will out pedal somebody many he, times. He's good. He's very good. He's very good. He's very underrated and very good. Don't tell him I said that. Oh, I was gonna touch on this comment down here. We got in a little bit of, I got a little, getting a little bit of trouble with hospitality crew. Uh, oh, you did? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Did well, <laughs> at the show before Phoenix, we mentioned to the Shake and Bake fans that they should come by. Oh, you dumbass! Check out our hospitality. Well, so the hospitality is really there for racers, <laughs> their teams. And a place for us to entertain sponsors that we bring into the pit. It is not, and I was informed of this, a place for the general fan to come by and hang out and eat the food. You don't. I, told, I wondered when you said it. I was told this is not the place for all the shake and bake fans to come hang out with you. And yeah. I was like, I told him that. Or so, well, like, yeah. Oh. So moving forward, it is not. Our trailer, Lyle's trailer, and hang out. It is not free concessions. Uh, <laughs> what we meant was wait out by the ropes and yell shake and bake and we'll come just out. Just come by, you know, <laughs> but like hanging out for several hours and eating the food and all that, that's not what – I'm sorry. Sorry if that's what I said or people took from that. But moving forward. Uh, yeah, Jerry Barker, I cannot believe – <laughs> that you landed that jet on that 3,700 feet runway. Woo! It's hard for me to land there in the rocket. That's Jeffrey Barker's dad. He flies jets. What do you mean it's hard to land the rocket there? You could land the rocket in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> Not if you want to try to take off and land it again. <laughs> like Lyle's back, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Lyle's alive. Woo! We got to we got to shake you back. Oh, the carrier pigeon, Matt. Oh, fuck yes, yes. The carrier pigeon. There's the there's the date for the uh, run. What you brung race, never to be seen again. Make it fly away, Matt. <laughs> oh, oh man. you'll never know. There it if, goes. If it flat away, it would have been awesome. Yeah, and like <laughs> Jody, poor Jody. <laughs> Well, we about killed the hospitality staff at Phoenix. We're sorry. We underestimated the amount of Shake It Bake fans would be in the desert in Arizona. I'm sorry. Look, we I had them in freaking um, in Vegas screaming at me, and it's so funny. I know I say this all the time, but Erica gets so flustered with it. She's like, that's insane. People yell Shake and Bake constantly. We love it. Some guy came up to me and goes, is it weird if I just yell Shake and Bake at you? I said, fuck, no, it's not weird. Yell it. <laughs> we love it. <laughs> Woo! That's crazy. Connie Klein landed one at Daniel Field. There was a uh, – we'll say this real quick and we got to wrap. There was a 737, Jerry Barker. I sent this to Jeffrey that landed by accident on the same runway you landed on. Um, they did it by oh, – A long time ago. 106 passengers on board. Pilot ar, 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 slid it down. Everything was fine. They had to strip the airplane – completely because it's too short to take off and bring in test pilots. It took him a year to finally get that thing out of there. I don't think he got to fly for it. Yeah. I would think that's not a good. Not good. Um, man, that was a lot in one show. Uh, I, there's topics we didn't get to cover, but we're long. Um, you guys got anything that you want to talk about? Got any sponsor plugs, any news coming up? All I do is race PDRA this weekend. Let's go. Then Charlotte. Let's go. The Honky Rocket's powered by Walter 601E 751 horsepower turbine engine. It's fast. Pretty fast. You said we're long. Yeah, yeah we're long. That was the winner. That's what she said. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, I saw somebody ask earlier what I was running at the fifty thousand dollar to win race at Shady Side. Yeah. So all of my uh, all of my pre arranged rides have fallen through. Uh, the new no prep car that Pete and I were putting together is no more. That deal fell apart. Uh, mm. So as of right now, I will be racing a decently fast nitrous car. Uh, that's not set in stone. So if anybody has a Pro 275 ish, fast LDR ish, blown alcohol, happy on 28s car that they want to potentially go and help me win 50 grand with, you can find me on Facebook or Instagram or somewhere. Hit me you up. You can come to the NHRA promo. It, 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 it hasn't been three high threes on a 275 or very, very low fours. Just don't, don't tell me what it could. It's got the power to do. No. No, I, we need something proven here. So there's that. There's I answered it. Okay. That's it. That's all I got. All we got. Well, uh, any other questions and comments really quick? We'll hang out another minute or two, and then we're going to blaze out. I have to go build some motors and stuff. Courtney's oh, dying man. to eat pizza. Her. She's like just staring at it. I have I have bird eaten two slices already. Ooh, this is what I need in a hunky rocket. Hey, go ahead and let me hold one of them and let me let me let me put one in there. But I'm pissed because the cheese ain't melting no more. I ordered it too soon. Yeah. Uh the race for the record deal is gonna be pretty cool. You guys will get to see some special shit. I got something I've been saving just for that. All right. Answer your question. What what question? Yeah, she's gonna whoop your ass. Answer my question about getting tested. I gotta. No, go. it doesn't have Canadian bacon on it. it. Has pepperoni like a gosh damn American. Uh, Annette, uh, uh, Connie Coletta landed. A ask your question again, Annette, and I'll answer. I don't testing all week. Uh, no offense, but Miles got testing at Darlington uh, all week for yeah. Charlotte. And when he's a run. Uh, Somebody says, ouch, what are we ouching about? Well, because oh, somebody asked me if I had Canadian bacon on my pizza. I said, no, I got real pepperoni like a gosh damn American. Then I said, sorry, Spencer. <laughs> uh, Annette, what's your question? <laughs> don't see it. 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 I don't see it. Maybe it's not in my deal. Y'all see what it. What are you fucking with, Lyle? What? What are you fucking with? Drug cool. and alcohol testing in NHRA. They haven't done it in a while. Oh, all right, here we go. Ever since COVID, the last time I've had to take any of my drivers up there was before COVID. COVID. I think they're a little bit broke. Um, now we're all going to have one. Josh Collins announcements on this coming soon. <laughs> Poor Semper. <laughs> Is the dessert. Uh, oh, man. Oh, uh, my identity. I used to be Cabernet Courtney. Now it's Canadian Bacon Enders. I've lost my identity already, Stevie. You I don't know. I, you're you yourself. He's taking your last name, so I don't know how that works. That's my last name is Enders. I know, but I said he's taking your last name. No, he's not. That was on his trailer. We can do it. Fuck off, Lyle. Yeah, give us a plug out to uh, Streetcar Bragging Rights at Carolina Dragway, 24, March 9th through the 11th. It's going to be an awesome show. Uh, some news coming up about that potentially down the road. Uh, get a process here. a four wide. Yeah, it's not going to happen. No. Yeah. Spencer Enders. Poor Spencer. God dang. Spencer Enders has a good ring to it. Poor guy. I know. He's got, listen, he's got a good sense of humor, but that shit's got to get old. <laughs> Um, in, in the old days, we absolutely did. I haven't competed in NHRA, but one race in the last two years. So I don't know what their policy is. Now. There used to be, yeah, they, it would be random. You had 24 hours to go to the medic trailer and handle it on site. Yep. None of my drivers have had it in a while. I know that the NHRA employees all got hit after Denver a couple years ago and a couple of them got shit canned. Whoopsie, Denver. Whoopsie. We may have, oh, we do have some shop oh, update picks. Yeah. So I went out to the shop today. I am proud that my flooring company likes money and they want to put uh, flooring down. So we do have some flooring update pictures today from the new shop. She's coming oh, along. Nice. Real nice. A little break room action in the KTR headquarters. I got a bar in there for me. Uh, there's my office. Uh, she's starting to come along. Um, 
we're definitely not there yet, but it is closer than what it's been. <laughs> Things are really, I'm really struggling getting, uh, getting this deal done. We're, we're working on it, but she's, she's way more work than what I anticipated. But more updates, pictures coming soon. I've got to go out there and spend a day or two, an hour or two a day out there trying to trying to get her rolling. But new new shop updates coming soon. Word. What are you laughing at? I'm just reading comments. Oh. oh I'm yeah. just reading comments. Yeah. Um, I don't have a NHRA car right now, so I don't have one. The Shadow's not NHRA legal. Um, so everybody keeps asking, I would love to come do that. First thing I got to do together is put together some funding to do it. Uh, KTR is wide open developing our new engine platform. Uh, we're using the, ta the shadow as a test mule for that platform. And as soon as we're done with that, uh, we'll work on putting a deal together to run some nature. But right now it's on the back burner for me. I have a lot of irons in the fire right now, <laughs> like a cat on a hot tin roof. <laughs> mm, man oof that's bad all right uh yes hats and shirts coming soon i know i said that on the next run of merch we were dropping shake and bake merch i have designs done for my two stars of the show to look at uh and and coming soon we're doing it inventory um we got we got a bunch of announcements about merch coming this week keep your eyes peeled on uh our deal but yes shake and bake merch is coming soon. Reminds me after the show, I need to send you guys some designs to look at. I've seen a couple comments asking about Halsey's Pro Mod race and the one at that new Flying H drag strip. Halsey's race is between two NHRA races. It's Mother's Day. Just, just not po really possible for somebody like Stevie or myself to go to NHRA race, come home, outlaw race for one weekend up north, come back home, and then go right back up north for another NHRA race. So we won't be at that one. And I'm fairly certain the flying H race is the same weekend as an NHRA race. As Charlotte too, because it's a yeah. Midwest race. Yeah, we, we won't be at either one of those, just simply a scheduling conflict. That's the only reason. Yep. And I've got a lot of requests. I'd love, I talked to Keith Haney. He ordered some parts this week and I, I would love to come to that race, but I can't miss uh, something we're already contracted to do yeah. <laughs> to go out there. Uh, and big shout out to Raul about SGMP. We, we, we tested at SGMP for the first time on big tires uh, a few weeks ago. And I was shocked at how good the track was, how accommodating they were, how affordably priced it was and how fast we went there. Um, we're, we'll be back soon to test. Uh, Raul's put a lot of resources into the racetrack, uh, and they're doing a good job. If you need to run a big tire or radial tire car, they'll treat you right. Uh, surface is very akin to what we race on, and uh, we were we were pleased. That's a shameless plug. That's true. You ready to roll? Ready I'm to good. Roll? Uh, this fucking uh, pizza is mad at me. Thank you guys for watching episode 34. Uh, I had a blast hanging out with you guys. Come see us at Rockingham next week. Uh, if you're coming to ro watch Radial Tire Racing, we'll talk shit about Courtney. And uh, me and Lyle will be hanging there. We'll be on property um, and look forward to seeing you guys. Matt.